This will be fun, I think. Hoping everything is Hey guys, right. welcome to Politically Provoked, an interactive podcast where we host debates, panels, and interviews. This is your first time joining us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to keep up to date with all our future debates and panels. We are primarily on YouTube, but you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, BitChute, TikTok, and Instagram. All the information is in the banner below. We also have a link tree you can find in the description, or you can just search Politically Provoked and we should pop right up. We are a neutral ground where people from across the political spectrum can either duke it out in a debate or just have a casual discussion in one of our panels. Either way, we try to represent both left and right wing views on every episode. I'm your left wing host, Brittany, and this is your right wing host, Todd. How are you, Todd? Good, Britt. How are you doing? I'm doing good. A little nervous, but I'm ready for a fun day. <laughs> All right, so we got a back to back debate night for you guys. It's going to be accidental. It's accidental. going to be an exciting one for sure. So, um, we got a surprise debate from um, someone that has never been on Politically Provoked, so I'm really excited Accident. about that. Our first debate, we will be doing transgender issues. Um, and then at 9 p.m., we are going to be debating uh, infrared on tanky communism. So let's bring on our debaters. First up is the owner of liberalforum.org. He also debates right-wing positions on behalf of Politically Provoked. We do not necessarily condone or agree with his positions, but feel it's important to have representation of the far right, far left, and everywhere in between. So let's bring on Andrew Wilson, a.k.a. Big Papa Fascist. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Doing good, yeah. So you want to introduce yourself, uh, tell people where you lie on the political spectrum, and where people can find you. Yeah, my name is Andrew Wilson, also known as Big Papa Fascist. I debate right-wing issues on behalf of Politically Provoked, and I'm here to do a two for tonight and kick a couple people over the rail. All right, thank you. All right, so next up is somebody brand new to Politically Provoked. Let's bring on Demon Mama. How are you tonight? Hello, I'm You're doing me. very yeah. well. Can you hear me now? I uh, just wanted yes, to just wanted to make sure that I wasn't uh, bleeding over any audio. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me on. I'm very happy to be on for the first time on this show. Um, I, I have heard of you around. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, my name is Demon Mama. You can find everything, all of my links at demonmama.com. M A M A. Super easy to find. All my links are right there, so you can go hang out with all of my lovely uh, fans. We have an incredibly awesome community. We talk about all kinds of issues, including trans issues, all the time where I am trans. Um, I represent a, a leftist perspective in general, though I don't really hold tight to any specific uh, label. Um, I believe in a world that is uh, better for the thriving of all of us um, equally. So that's my position and uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Great, thank you so much. Um, and you can find both of our guests, um, all their social media links in the description. So if you wanna go check out their content, it is there. All right, so here is what we will do. Each person can give an opening statement, can be as little as one minute, no longer than five, about the topic and what your stance is. After that, we will open up the floor um, for open conversation. At the end of the debate, we will um, do a Q&A. So everybody in the audience, you can ask questions, tag politically provoked, who your question is addressed to, and we should be able to get to them all. We'll do closing statements and final thoughts after the Q&A. I'm not going to bring up the rules, but let's just try to um, limit the interruptions and no personal attacks, Andrew. Okay, so, all right, so why don't we get started with opening statements. Andrew, why don't you get us going? Yeah, so, uh, Demon Mama, um, I know that this was all kind of put together last minute, so it's not unreasonable to think you you probably don't have an opening statement. That would probably be fair fair to think, right? The reason I was bringing that up is because uh, just for the purposes of fairness, as I go through mine, if you have any points of contention or you want me to reread it or anything like that, just just let me know. Oh, that's fine. I'll be taking notes. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm very, very comfortable doing open statements on the fly. So thank you. OK, so from my perspective, transgenderism in and of itself is a paradox. Advocates for transgenderism make the base claim that gender is socially constructed. Then also make the claim they were born in the wrong body and need to change their body so it fits better with the gender they claim they wanna be. This is an absolute paradox. If gender is socially constructed, and I agree it is, then the only thing we have is a determination of sex would be biological markers to say you feel like the opposite sex is a physical impossibility, thus creating yet another paradox. To go more down this par the paradoxical nature of what you on the left call transgenders, 
Let's also not forget that transgenders who enter opposite sex relationships often refer to themselves as being homosexuals, even though homosexuality, as we all know, is a same sex relationship. It has nothing to do with gender whatsoever to claim you are a biological male, but change your gender to a woman's, for instance, and then enter a relationship with a woman uh, that isn't a homosexual relationship to claim it is is logically inconsistent. The paradoxes are actually never ending in this entire trans theory. I've heard, for instance, that men can have periods. This is, of course, absurd, unless your definition of a man has something to do with gender roles. Men can't have periods. This is an absurd postulation made possible with the advent of a term called IMS. It's a total fraud and in no way represents the menstrual cycle of a biological female, which, by the way, is completely obvious to everybody. The list actually goes on forever in regards to all the paradoxes actually involved with what you leftists call transgenders. In essence, as a fast summary, my overarching position here is that what you consider transgenders aren't actually objectively real, instead a simple social construction, in essence, a concept. A concept that logically fails on the merits of consistency. Transgenders can only exist within the paradigm of feeling like one. So they can be equally dismissed as not being real with no actual logical penalty. If you claim you feel like a woman and therefore you are, it's just as meritous for me to claim I feel you are not a woman, therefore you're not. So we end up with the dubious claim of it doesn't hurt you in any way to accept me as a woman, but hurts me not to be accepted. This is yet another in a long string of paradoxes, since hurt, in this case, can only be measured in terms that are emotional. I can equally claim to be just as hurt by accepting you, again, with no logical penalty. The paradoxes are unlimited. This debate, like those in the past, will likely devolve quickly into an appeal to authority, and this is because the trans phenomenon cannot be logically consistently explained. All right, so um, Demon Mama. Damn, that was a that was quite an opening statement. I'll I'll give you credit. It was uh you had a lot of points in there. Um, so let's let's try and go. I'm gonna try and address these point by point in my opening statement. So first of all, the idea that that uh, that as you use the word transgenderism, a term that nobody really uses, um, is a paradox, uh, really is, is based on some weird assumptions. I heard that you brought up the sort of wrong bar body argument that you're born into the wrong body. And, you know, it's really funny. If you had, if you actually knew anything about the subject that you're talking about, you would realize that the wrong body argument was a, uh, a, a chosen uh, path of political advocacy that very few people truly uh, believe they are born in the wrong body. But because most of America um, is, and and in the past, this is less so these days, is a dualist, meaning that they believe that there is both a body and a soul, um, transgender activists, usually around the time of the 80s and 90s, began to explain things as being born into the wrong body so that they could make sense to people who didn't necessarily understand the exact same terminology as them. In my opinion, that is ideal and an attempt to build a bridge, a diplomatic approach that shows a genuine need uh, to be recognized and be treated as, a, as an equal, um, whereas you seem to represent this as a paradox. Um, that's not really the case. Uh, you know, gender theorists for a long time have have held, and I myself hold, the idea that gender is indeed a social construct, and more so, more importantly, it is an identifier. It is a uh, it is among many other things that we consider identifiers. Things like names. There is no such thing as an objective name. You might be able to come up with something like a term, like a legal name. A legal name being this is the name that the state knows you as, but we. Do not uh, rec we do not recognize legal names as the only name. For example, I noticed that uh, your on your your name online is Big Papa Fascist, and I'm sure many people refer to you by that name. That is not your legal name, but in most online spaces, that is your name. Um, and this also explains why people can have multiple names. Uh, likewise, gender is best understood as a term of self-identity that can be declared and uh, and agreed upon and respected in good faith. 
Now, um, the idea that uh, I, you threw in something about homosexuality being not true about trans people, um, but, uh, you know, I guess that I guess you're allowed to try and assert that, but that's not really true. And even if you disagree with it, there are many, many other people who um, don't who don't disagree with that idea, who would say that, yeah, if you spend your life identi identifying one way and you date people who identify the same way, that is more than reasonable to consider a homosexual relationship, both for the purposes of society and for the purposes of self-identity. For example, when I go out with my girlfriend, which I have, multiple of, um, when I go out with my girlfriend, people see us as lesbians. They see us as gay women, and that's perfectly fine with me. Um, uh, but it is a reality nonetheless. Um, you say that everything is based on, uh, on, on feelings and whatnot, but that's not really true. Um, and even if it were, feelings are a real thing. We recognize this all the time. For example, I'm sure you wouldn't, um, I'm sure you wouldn't, uh, laugh at the idea that, um, you know, men have a high suicide rate in our society. Um, and that is ultimately based off of feelings. But feelings, as it turns out, can be pretty important, and they can factor into a lot of things. Now, that doesn't mean that anything that you feel is automatically 100% true about the world. However, it does indicate that feelings are very important. And as it turns out, most of the time, fascists, um, but not just fascists, transphobes in general, will uh, pretend and over-exaggerate how much they are actually impacted by the existence of and the rights of trans people in the name of, well controlling other people. Uh, there is no evidence anywhere that you or, or any of the people that you care about are psychologically damaged by the existence of trans people. However, there is an abundance of evidence that people like you, people who deny trans people validity and basic humanity and medical treatment, do actually cause meaningful social harm to others. And uh, I think to assert otherwise would be uh, absurd and dishonest. So I'm, I'm interested to see where this conversation will go, but I think that will wrap it up for my opening statement. I think I touched on everything that you brought up there. Right. Okay. Uh, Demon Mama, are you a woman? Yes, I am. What makes you one? What makes me a woman is that I have declared that I am a woman. So it's because you feel like a woman? No, it's because I am a woman. Okay, but what makes you one? The fact that I declared that I'm a woman, the same thing that makes you a man. Are, are you a man, right? You're a man? Yeah. Okay, what makes you a man? I produce small gametes. Incorrect. I also have, X, I also have XY chromosomes. Can you prove that to us? Would you be willing to um, undergo a chromosomal test right here on well, the stream? Well, I don't, I don't need to. I have five children, so oh. we know I produce small That's gametes. That's not true. What if they were adopted? What if you're lying about them? No, That's I'm not, not lying about them. And well, uh, that's what you're saying, but people lie on the internet all the time. What if I was to say that I thought you but were even, a woman? But even, let's just, let's just grant for a second that I was, it still mm -hmm. wouldn't make it any less true that if I produced small gametes, I'd be a male. Well, uh, you would be a male, perhaps, but you would not be a uh -huh. man, necessarily. These oh, are I different see. terms. Well, yeah, see, well, see. I'm looking no, at wait, the wait, definition. hold on a second. Before looking you go, at the, excuse let me. Let me finish, I'll take it back to you. When I look at the definition of man, it says a male adult. Um, Where? Would you like me to link it to you? Yeah, is that like Webster's Dictionary or something? Uh, wait, 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 hold on a second. Didn't you say in your opening statement that this would end up being an argument about an appeal to authority? Well, look at who's well, appealing not, to an authority immediately. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not appealing to What's anything. A, a appeal, you, you appeal to, you, you, appeal to you dictionary? Questioned, you questioned a, de a definition, so I had to give you the mm -hmm. definition if you question it. No. What I'm questioning no, I don't is the to. way that you for the way that the way that what I'm questioning is the way that you formulate your definition. Okay, well um, let's let's move back then. First what makes all, you a woman? Oh, what makes me a woman? The fact that I yeah. declare that I'm a woman. You already asked this already. Again, so it's just a I, feeling. Excuse me. Let me finish my my sentence. I know you're very eager to get in here, but let me explain what I'm saying. I believe okay. very that that not only do I believe this that this is a truthful way of doing things, but I also believe it is a better way to recognize that gender is a social construct and that by and large, the only way that we currently engage with one another in our current timeline, in the status quo, is by a good faith assumption of honesty. When you say you're a man, I assume you're a man. I never ask for you to um, to produce a chromosomal test. I never ask you to do this, except for when I did here to illustrate a point. As, as I, what I'm pointing out here is that nobody uses uh, 
chromosomes or sex characteristics or anything like that, except for really small-minded people who don't understand things about the world or how things work. Those types of people might. But most people, they look at someone and they use, um, as a matter of identity, um, a number of different traits. And I advocate that we should, we should consider uh, self-identity to be the uh, ideal way of doing this because that's how we do it most of the time. That's how we identify one another most of the time. You ask someone, hey, uh, who are you? And they tell you their name. And if you're interested in their gender, you ask them about it. And that has not, that is separate than sex. Sex and gender have some, um, some correlations with regard to how society um, uh, treats people with certain types of bodies and whatever, but they're not the same thing. And this has been the case for a very long time. Um, basically, I, agree. I agreed. I agreed in my opening that gender okay. is a social construction. Yeah, that's what, fantastic. That's actually what, that's actually what so makes it so So then you agree so with me. That's actually what makes it so paradoxical because I ask ah, you what makes – you say, I ask you, what makes you a woman? Yes. And you say, because I say so, right? Correct. Because I, because that is what I identify as. And, and so gender, so it's, gender, so excuse me, your, if, right, don't so, interrupt well, me. I just let you go. No, 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 so let excuse me. me. Wait, but you asked so me a question. Okay, yes, you guys. Yes, but it's I mean, I think it's unfair to be asked a question and then not being, and then have him answer the question that he asked me. I think that's unfair. Right, go ahead. So, Thank go you. Ahead you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, as I said, gender is a social construct that is that is most useful and most commonly used right now as a matter of self-identity. When people tell us they are one thing, it is the least, it is the best path for us to say there is literally no reason why anyone would need to lie about this or would lie about it. And there's no way we can reasonably know. If we go by your definition of gender, that you where you tie gender 100% to sex, that would lead to a world that is absurd. It would be a world where you could never take anybody's word for the gender that they are, even if they looked like what you thought a man was supposed to look like, you wouldn't be able to do that because for all you know, they might not be a man. They might not produce gametes at all. What if they're intersex? What if they just look externally like a man, but they aren't? Your definition of gender doesn't work. And this is why people like myself and people who have been a part of trans activism have argued that there is a better, more functional and more accurate definition of gender, which is that gender is a social construct of self-identity and self-perception. So it's not quantifiable. Well, many things are not deep, are not immediately quantifiable. Well, that's not what I asked. Is it specifically this is not quantifiable? Uh, I mean, I think that it could be quantifiable. Um, it, like it depends on the context, right? Like if you wanted to ask how many people identified. Well, if you say, if you say the only reason that this is true is because I say so, then how can that be quantified? Wait, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry. What what are you asking? Are you asking whether you can quantify okay, anything well, related so, to gender? So, I'm, I'm so just confused instance, as to what you're saying. Let's let's pretend for a second the alphabet is a social construction. You would agree yes, that it is. that's true. Uh huh. Of course. Okay, but we have to limit we have to limit the alphabet in order to make it useful, don't we? No, not necessarily. No, so if the alphabet went on infinitely, how useful would it be? Well, it probably wouldn't be very useful if it went on infinitely. Yeah, it but probably we, but, wouldn't be very but, useful. Uh, hold this on a second. Wait, wait, wait. Don't get ahead of yourself. Hey, look, you, you really love to do this. You really like to ask a question or pose a hypothetical and then not let me answer or address it. Oh, no, I just like to I think that's very up. convenient for you. I think that's very convenient for you. Um, well, you go off on these weird tirades. It just No, no, I'm explaining things. It just because you're – wait, wait. It. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, but just because your mind is too small to grasp these ideas doesn't mean that the audience's mind is. You don't need to say that, like, do some weird ad hom attack of like, oh, you're you're going off on a tangent. No, I'm explaining my ideas that you're asking me about. If you don't want to know these things, don't ask that question, and I'll just talk about what I'm interested in. So are they quant are they quantifiable or not? They're quantifiable, quantifiable in certain ways, but just like well, a name, just like a name, the only way that you can quantify an identity is by asking the person who is doing the identifying. That is how identity works. It is not a. It so, is not so can I directly. Be a a, no. Oh, why not? Well, I mean, I suppose if you wanted to play with the definition of leprechaun, you could probably come up with some interesting way. But generally, no. And the reason for that. Can I be an attack excuse helicopter? Me, excuse me. No, you cannot. And the reason for that is, let me explain. An attack okay. helicopter is not an identity. A an attack helicopter is an object. We have a thing that is defined as an attack but helicopter. But you just said identity is not quantifiable. <laughs> Identity is not, but an attack helicopter. An hold attack on, helicopter. hold on a second. Hold on. Don't get ahead of yourself. I know you really think that's <laughs> super funny. You did the one meme, but um, but it's not, and nobody is impressed with this. It's not any sort of logical triumph to say I'm an attack helicopter. We ha an attack helicopter is an 
object. We decide what an attack helicopter is because it is a machine that has specific parameters, that has blueprints. That is not the same for something like woman or a name. They are, they are objectively real. Excuse me, I'm not done. They are both social constructs in a certain way, but they are different types of social constructs. The, the social construct of an attack helicopter is something that allows us to identify a weapon of war. We, nobody identifies as a weapon of war because it is not an identifier. It is an object. This is like linguistics, and maybe you've never studied linguistics. It's possible that you haven't. Maybe you've never looked into linguistics, but our brain has different types of social constructs contained in our mind. One type, an identifier, is like a name or like woman or like a uh, Christian, or, or um, there's all kinds of different things that are identifiers that we decide for ourselves and we tell the world. An attack helicopter is not one of those things. An attack right. helicopter is a, def is a defined object. Yeah, it's, it's objectively real. That's my that's my whole point. Well, I mean, so because that's not so that's because, not what the wait 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 that's not what those words mean. That's not what objectively yeah, okay, real but, means. But Gender is, is objectively is, real. You are literally working, wait wait hold on well, a second. Yeah, don't interrupt no, me. Yeah, I didn't interrupt you. You literally just when did. You're talking, when okay, you're talking guys, maybe we should have um timed back and forth so that um this is fine. This is fine. We're getting through it. When you're talking right. about an attack helicopter as a social construction and being objectively real, you're right. Both are true. The social construction portion of it might be the identifier that it is an attack helicopter, the conceptualization perhaps. But there is an objectively real thing also called an attack helicopter. We can agree yes, that- Yes, and there is the an objectively real thing called say, woman. To agree, so we can agree that conceptually, we can con conceptually agree that this is a social construction and we can also agree that it's objectively real. Within your paradigm, you're saying this is a social construction only. There's no way for you to quantify it. No, so no, when I ask no. you if oh I can God. be a leprechaun God, you really don't understand or it, right? I can be a unicorn mm -hmm. and you can't quantify it, it becomes paradoxical. You see how that works? No, I don't. That doesn't follow at all. The, there is something objectively called a woman, and that thing is that it is an identifier. That is what being a woman is. You can identify yourself as a woman. And what you want to talk about what woman might mean with regard to cultural context, what it might mean is that requires, and that can be analyzed from a historical perspective, which you just refuse to engage with. Because so it's subjective. In, in, no, in your mind. what, what But— if you want to go that far, if you're going to say that anything that exists is subjective, I mean, that is true. We can go we can go full solipsistic if you want to here. Uh, I didn't know that that's what we were going to be discussing here as to whether we, uh, how we actually know things and how we observe things about the world. If you're asking no, whether— not. Excuse me, hold I'm on. I, am, I was trans, in the middle of a sentence. My God, you really don't have any respect, do you? I mean, well, I guess— You've had more time than me. I think it, wait, it's not about time, time, is it? Is it really well, about I feel time? Like we should do the, do um, like some time back and forth. I, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, oh, I mean, I'm fine with whatever. Did. Look, I've I've done all kinds <laughs> of I've I've done all kinds of, of scrappy debates. I just you know sometimes when I get asked multiple questions and then when I'm when I'm trying to respond to the question, I'm told that I'm talking too much. That seems really bad faith and like childish. I didn't say honest. I didn't say you were talking too much. I just like to cut right. I mean, you to literally the chase. did what though. You're saying what you're saying is that gender is a social construction is not quantifiable and the only identifiable fire that you need for genders because I said so based How do you on quantify? absolutely can you, else. can you tell me something? If can you that, tell me something real quick? If that's the case, then you run into my exact paradoxical argument and there's not, no, there's actually nothing wrong then with me identifying with the social construction part of being an attack helicopter, even if I don't identify as the objective reality of what a, an attack helicopter is as an object. But because we you're, just you're, admitted you're that still a struggling with this. In. You're you're still struggling with this. These are two different I'm not types. Struggling with it. Yes, you are. You are. Ge you no, are I'm genuine. Not. I'm like watching your. I'm watching you slip over the the words that we're using here. There are different types of social constructs. A a definition of what is an attack helicopter is is definitional. It is not an. It is not used for identity. An identifier like woman or a name or your rel religious identity or your racial identity. These are identifiers. Identifiers. And some of these identifiers even have slightly different rules about them. Like, for example, we have different functional rules for gender than we do for race. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. But what you're doing is you're basically saying, I refuse to acknowledge that there are different types, or I am selectively refusing to acknowledge that there are different types of identifiers, or sorry, of social constructs that exist. You refuse to acknowledge that, which means that it's very hard to proceed because you refuse to acknowledge that we use words differently. And what you want to do is you want to impose on this conversation some absurd limitation that nobody nobody behaves under. No one pretends, and no, no person on the planet besides, I guess, people with a really, really poorly constructed argument 
argument because they really don't like trans people or something or they don't want them to exist um those types of people maybe will come to this position but no one else does every every single day we walk outside and we use all kinds of different social constructs for different reasons humans are social animals obviously like this is not a hard thing to do you're just refusing to engage with it Okay, so can you point out when I said that there wasn't different types of types of social construction? Yes, when you can, fact, I pointed I pointed out the the alphabet as being an example of one type of social uh -huh. construction, and I pointed out gender as being a separate type of social construction. Correct. Isn't that so? Yes. Okay. Well, then, and then but then, then you clearly, but wait, then hold on a second. I must, you asked me I a question know, again. You just asked me a question I again. I must know the difference between social constructions. You did it again. You asked me a question, then you immediately tried to answer. Well, you won't let me follow up to finish anything. It, it wasn't a matter of follow up. Before you go on it, this long diatribe. Okay. All right. So I think we're gonna do the time, like time back and forth, so we can actually, um, you can get what, what you're wanting to say out. So thank you. Um, we'll just do like um one minute back and forth, and you don't have to use it all, but um, just okay, so, uninterrupted. So to my to my minute, of course I know the difference between uh different types of social constructions. What I'm talking about here is uh, Demon Mama is saying that as far as social constructions go with identifiers, uh, the claim from Demon Mama is that as far as an identifier goes, it's not quantifiable when it comes to gender. Literally, that's what Demon Mama said. So why is it that the expectation, after Demon Mama says that this is not quantifiable, why is Demon Mama arguing with me about whether or not it's quantifiable by saying there's different types of social constructions. Clearly there's different types of social constructions, but this particular one is not quantifiable. Since it's not quantifiable, you can basically use almost anything you and I agree on as an identifier to identify something, can't we? Uh, sorry, uh, were you finished? Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I saw his video still moving. My, my, my apologies. Um, Yes. Yeah, so again, what you're doing here is while you are saying aloud, like the words that you are saying is, um, yes, I recognize there are differences, but then your argument demonstrates that you aren't recognizing the difference. Um, there is some conceivable future, um, perhaps a future in which um, we broaden the definition of attack helicopter um, and people can, I don't know, we, we recognize that like because of cybernetic enhancements or something that it makes more sense for us to, for people to be able to identify themselves that way. But that's not the world that we live in right now. All social constructs are subject to change. You bring up the alphabet and that's a great example of one. Like I'm, I'm amazed that like you would use it in your argument, but not recognize. Do you think the alphabet has always stayed the same? The alphabet isn't even the same between two countries. When you go, if you go north to Canada, you will recognize that they have a different alphabet than we do. They have the, uh, I, I can't remember the name of the the little C with the S underneath that's present in uh, in in French. I really can't remember the name of it off there. Germans have a different alphabet. Greeks have a different alphabet. The Cyrillic alphabet exists. There is hiragana and katakana in Japan. There are, uh, there is uh, Chinese. Um, um, what's it called? Uh, a kanji. Um, that's the Japanese term for it. I don't recall the uh, the Chinese name for it. This is this okay. is like an, a you know what you're showing is that in your in your actual arguments they're not actually holding together with what you're saying. So you're you're they're contradicting they're yourself. Together fine. You're making you're absolutely right. making my point for me. You're you are saying that the alphabet is quantifiable, mm -hmm. and it needs to change in quantity uh, in order for it to be a useful social construction. It may need to change in quantity as far as uh, less letters, for instance, maybe more letters, uh, yes. maybe a lot more letters, maybe Correct. a lot less letters. Correct, right? which all means there is things, no, wait, wait, hold, these, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. This, these were your rules, remember? So all of these things, all of these things are quantifiable, except in your case, what you consider identifiers, identifiers are not quantifiable. Right. And so in your case, within your metrics, you're saying that the only thing that makes you a transgender is that you say so. But when I ask you what what makes you a woman, you say, well, nothing more than just me saying that I'm a woman. Correct. Of course, that's paradoxical in and of itself. No, it is not. See, again, this is where you're this is what's happening. You're like you're almost grasping it and then you're slipping right <laughs> off of it. So an alphabet 
is a social construct that we define in a number of ways. When you say something like an alphabet is quantifiable, that is a meaningless statement. Of anything can be quantifiable. I could quantify all kinds of things about gender. It depends on what you're asking. What do you mean when you're asking for quantifiable? If, if you were to say quantify the alphabet, I would say that is an impossible question. I mean, maybe maybe I would recommend reading some Wittgenstein um, who could teach you perhaps a little bit about the meaning, the, the, the need for linguistically understandable and um, and logically understandable questions. You might, you might grow from that. Um, but what I'm trying to tell you here is that asking quantify the alphabet is impossible because then I would have to say which alphabet I would have to say the alphabet at which point in history and those all would be different quantities but the quality of an alphabet that the that the alphabet is a constructed a a constructed set of letters that are commonly used and that change depending on the societal need is exactly the same this goes the same for gender as well a gender man woman uh, whatever other gender you want to come up with uh, is quanti is is quantifiable by its by its context, but it is qualitatively a self identifier. Okay, go ahead, Andrew. So it sounds like all alphabets can be quantified then. <laughs> okay. So you, you want to like, give up your time? You give up your time that you, That's what you all got. Right. All right, cool. Um, well, I mean, how do how do you I how mean, do you this have is, a non quantifiable? This is, this is the, wait, this is the you debate have a equivalent. You just like start, you just gave up your words. time, and now you're talking during my time. Come on, this is silly. Come on, this is so childish. I, I was just clarifying the question. Go I mean, ahead. I guess it does make sense. You 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 basically did the debate equivalent of crossing your arms and saying hm, no. And uh, like, I don't know what to tell you about that. If you just are going to, if you're going to hear my my explanation of this, and then you're going to stand and and just say no, I don't think so, but not provide any reasoning for that. That's silly. I, the al the concept, the concept of an alphabet, the concept mm -hmm. of an alphabet cannot be quantified. It is not quantifiable. I mean, it could be if you asked a specific question. Like for example, if you said how many how letters. Yeah, you could you well, how many letters in the English alphabet? Yes, you probably sure. could. And you would al so but you would also excuse me, but yeah. you would also have to add to that in the English alphabet as of this year, because we don't know. We might change it next year. And guess I what? Agree. Guess what? We have other types of social constructs that have some similar rules and some different rules, like gender. Gender, which is best and most functionally and most ethically understood as a matter of self identity. We already do this now. You do not have to show every person that you talk to a uh, a chromosomal test that proves that you are a man. People just take your word for it because that's the best way to do it. And as it turns out with regard to trans people, when trans people have a very genuine understanding of themselves from a gender that, that is as a gender that they have decided upon, that they have self-identified as, it makes sense to simply say, yes, in good faith, we agree with you. Because gender is so complicated. It's such a, it is, it, it is, it is, has such a historical com uh, uh, history. There are societies that have diff have mo more than one. Sorry, I don't want to go over my time, but I did want to get my idea. <laughs> okay. um, this is hard to do in one minute on this topic, but Basically, what I'm saying is that gender has changed all throughout history with regard to what it does in the world, but what it is has always been an identifier, and that is still true to this day. You just deny that and refuse to engage in it because you want to be able to make stupid jokes about attack helicopters or something. No, no stupid joke. I'm trying to try. I mean, to get you did you do understand. stupid jokes. It's not my fault. I'm trying to get you to understand that if you just say that I am something as an identifier and mm -hmm. I disagree that you are that thing, what makes you right? I'm sorry. Um, what makes, what makes you right? I mean, yes. agreement. Isn't it just as valid agreement? in other words? Isn't it just as valid? And yeah, exactly. Agreement. So it's just as valid in other words for me to say you're not a woman as it is for you to say you're a woman. Correct. Well, that depends on how you define valid, right? Because um, when I say valid, I usually use the term um, like, I usually use the term valid to mean like um like uh socially reasonable um uh harm like like harmless etc cetera, etc cetera, like these sorts of things um but I I get the feeling that when you like if if you wanted to define valid as like can you say that thing yes you can you can say anything you want there's nothing stopping it's just you. as I'm talking about logical uh, it's just as logically valid if you were to say that I, my identity is woman and I disagree and say, no, it's not. Your identity is no. man. See, this is where right? you're missing the logical why is it, link. Why is it logically invalid for me to identify you differently than how you identify yourself? Let me explain this again. I will explain it again. This is like the fourth or fifth time I've explained this to you. 
because Use small words excuse me i will i will i know you really need those gender is a matter of self-identity that is why that is why that is why it is different why if you tell me that is why it is valid for me to say yes my identity is woman and it is not valid logically for you to say you are not a woman because you don't get to know that you don't know what people are nobody does gender only functions and it does function by the way gender functions great when we treat it as the social construct it is supposed to be and again linguists uh, of all stripes uh, gender theorists have talked about this forever which I'm sure you have never read anything of because I'm sure you probably think that they're like degenerates or something like that um, and therefore you can easily put them out of sight and out of mind that little thought terminating cliche thing but in reality um, we recognize that gender functions best as a social construct that is based on self-identity and therefore logically it follows that I can declare my identity just like you can declare your identity and you can't declare my identity for me you can't do that the same way i can't tell you that your name isn't andrew um you can't tell me that i am not a woman and i can't tell you that you're not a man and guess what that works that makes our society work it makes our society better it makes our world better and it makes more sense it it it, it using language that way builds a better use for that language I and see. you have so yet to, to display you have yet to display so, anything to the so opposite to this, so to get this right it's okay for you to identify however you choose based on however you feel, but it's not okay for me to identify you however I choose based on the way that I yes, feel. Yes, because you, because identity, identity is not determined by you. You don't get to impose identity on other people in the same way I don't get to impose identity on you. Now, if you want to make other things, like for example, your uh, your so oh so clever um, attack helicopter meme, you know, you might be able to go if you were to claim I am the object, an attack helicopter. I could go well. That's not true. An attack helicopter is a weapon of war that has a rotor blade and blah 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 blah. Whatever specifications you wanted to. However, that is not the case for woman because if you look at what a woman actually is, woman is a self identifier. Jeez, I don't understand how you're not grasping this. Is it that, are you that desperate to hold on to that lame, stale joke? Is that what it is? Is it like you really love saying that you're an attack helicopter? Uh, no, it has to do with logical consistency. So but I've already displayed I'm, that that's not true, I, that your, I, your logic was, is not consistent here. Let me finish. Yeah. What I was trying to flesh out here was very simple, which is that you want to have your cake and eat it too. You're trying to say that in this particular, in this particular social construction, when it comes to identifiers, when it comes to people, only people can identify themselves other people can't identify them right yes oh, so only them. therefore so therefore yes. only your feelings matter not the feelings of the people who are around you when it comes to identity with and regard I can't to identity any... wait you just yeah, well, yeah when, it, when it when it when it comes to identity okay that is correct so for instance what? i can give you some examples of when you might be identified in ways that you don't want to be identified for instance let's say you use a fake name mm -hmm. would would it be fair to say that police might identify you with your actual name well, that's not your actual name. That would be perhaps your legal name or your state ID mm -hmm. name, but that is not your name. So, wait, so this is, wait, 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 no, don't, don't, don't. Let me fucking answer for God's sake. Like, holy shit, I hate this so much. Um, it, it's such a, such a double standard. Okay, let me explain this to you. Again, um, you're on here with a name tag that says Andrew Big Papa Fascist. None of us and no one here, none of the people watching, none of the thousands of people watching my stream right now, none of those people um, are going to doubt that you are Andrew Big Papa Fascist because that is your name. Now, of course, there are different. I know this is going to be really hard. I know you've been struggling to grasp these sorts of things this entire time, but there are different types of names. Now, if you want to say that somebody was using a fake name to get away with a crime, well, I mean, we all use fake names all the time. And in the case of a crime, what is relevant, no matter what, is not your necessarily your monikers. I guess it could become relevant if you did like a cyber crime or something. But what is relevant in that case is your legal name, the name that is kept on record by the state. But a name and a legal name aren't the same thing. They're not even close to the same. And we recognize this all the time. For example, I mean, how many people, I mean, I know every single person out here in the audience probably has a cousin who goes by a different name because their uncle named them Bob Jr. And so they go by the name Robbie or something like that. And everybody knows them as Robbie and everybody calls them Robbie and nobody says fucking anything about it. And the reason for that is names 
are an identifier that get to be determined by the person who is declaring their identity. And yes, if you want to talk about a legal name, that's a very specific type of name. That's the equivalent of saying the English alphabet as of 2021. Okay. So it's not hard to understand. Can, but you and I can agree then that there's plenty of times where it's appropriate for people to put identifiers on you that you don't necessarily want to have. Um, there probably could be. Um, I think mm -hmm. that there are some valid valid examples of that. Like, for example, I, I see. Um, like, for example, if I was to commit a crime that harmed another person, people mm -hmm. might uh, identify me as uh, a uh, like a criminal. Um, and that might be very fair. That might be perfectly just. Um, but it might also not be, keep in mind, because there are people who are innocent who are um, identified incorrectly um, as a... Uh, as a criminal, but you are also talking about a different form of identification. There is identity. So who's valid? What's that? So who's valid in that case? Well, it's is very it the person identifying right? themselves or the person who's identifying the other person? Well, thankfully, we have all kinds of rules for that. Uh, we have all kinds of systems that work in various different ways. Some countries have bad justice systems and identification systems, and other ones have good ones. I don't understand what's hard to understand about this. I don't know where your contention is here. You've just well, pointed my, out. My, wait, 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 wait. I was not finished with my sentence. I was. I just pointed out <laughs> that you did not actually uh, manage to do anything here other than simply state, oh, there is another type of social construct. I agree. There are all kinds of social constructs that do different things. Some of them are useful. Some of them are not. Okay. So what I was pointing out is that the merit within your argument that self-identifiers can only be produced by the person is um, without merit. No, and it's completely true. without merit by your own agreement. And Incorrect. you just gave me several several examples of of it not being meritous yourself. So really? again, come back to this logical conundrum of why your feelings on what you identify as are more important than what my feelings are about what you identify as. It's it's not logically consistent. Yes, now, it is. You keep I've on, already explained you keep this on, like four times. You keep on going along with this uh, this whole little undertone of a smooth brain and blah 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 ad homs because I didn't it's say all you, you were got. a smooth brain. Hey, I didn't it's say you were a smooth brain. It's all you got. The, I never you, said you were a smooth been, brain. Excuse me, please, 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 please. Big Papa fascist. I, I understand. You've been ad homing the whole time. No, I haven't. Um, yeah, uh, what yeah. I've been no, I've been strongly implying that you're struggling with these concepts because it is visibly apparent that you are struggling with a lot of these concepts and and you're getting f like actively. Well, f every everybody struggles with these concepts because they're paradoxical. I that's don't think my so. I don't think that's true. Paradoxical. So I, I have this. On, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 not on. moving on. Don't you, don't you do that? You I wasn't stay done. In this forever. Yes, I want to. I want. I want to finish what I was saying because you, you, okay. you, you do this thing where you try to take control of the conversation and answer my questions for me so that it conveniently. It's like. It's like it's like arguing with a I don't know it's like you want to argue with like a doll instead of a human you want well, to like, you go on these long boring diatribes just get oh, to the point. I, oh I'm so sorry is the little is the little fascist mad that it's boring oh the ideas are too big for him <laughs> oh I'm so sorry <laughs> Okay, so yeah, finish, finish what we were gonna say, and then um, and then yeah, finish. sorry. I'm, I was gonna try, say I'm is trying that... to not do the time things. Um, just more so if it if there's a lot of interruption. I want you guys to be able to just have your free flowing conversation, but just um. So so on to the. Uh, Wait a minute! No 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 no! Hold on a second. The mod just gave it to me, dude. Jesus Christ! You really are yeah. like wow. You just love hearing your own <laughs> voice. Like right? Like am I wrong? Or did you just not pass it to me? Yeah, go, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, well, you, were gonna, you were going to finish your <laughs> sentence. Um, you said. So. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've explained exactly how this logic works. That um that there are all types of of of, uh, of social constructs that we use identity is one of those we do not tell someone that their name isn't x ever um and when you're talking about something yes, like a do. no we do not there is that you never just gave happens. examples of it happening literally okay okay doris time. okay doris i'm going to call you doris <laughs> for the rest of this is that going to be sensical no it'll be very confusing for the audience and you will be mad that it's not what matches your name tag so i'm going i'm why would i bother why would i bother giving forcing you to have some name that's not yours that's fucking ridiculous nobody does this you are just simply lying because you've realized that your logic doesn't work it works fine. You've, okay, you've thanks, Doris. You conceded it by every metric. Thank you, but Doris. But that aside, what I wanted to move on to was the conundrum of transsexuality and uh, homosexuality. And I am okay. am struggling with this concept well, maybe that, I can help you. You, that, that a biological male can engage in other than same-sex activity and still be considered a, uh, a homosexual. 
Well, I mean, that depends very much on your uh, on your definition of homosexuality, right? That would be um, same sex activity. That's everybody's definition. No, it is not actually. Um, interesting. It's not. Like, <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't. Not even close. Again, once again, like just because you don't keep up with with things doesn't mean that you don't. Let me let me give you an example of this. Did you know that the term? Uh, are you familiar with the term bisexual? Yeah. Okay. What is your just real quick? This is a quick question. You don't need to go on a big thing. What is your what is your understanding of what the word bisexual means? Someone has sex with both sexes. Okay, excellent. Okay, did you know that in the 80s, the word bisexual meant somebody who believes that they are both sexes at once, aka some, it's it's very similar to what we now call non-binary. Did you know that? Sure, sure, makes sense. Okay, cool. So terminology can change once pe if, if people sort of agree that, hey, there's a better definition here. There's a way to be more clear, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure that is going to happen a lot over the course of our lives. Some people like yourself just sort of stubbornly refuse when it's, con when it's convenient for you, mind you, because you don't really do this for other things. Just when it's convenient, just when you want to be able to oppress somebody, um, you know, you'll, you'll pop in and say, no, I don't want to do that one. Um, but in reality, uh, we have not like uh, everything from the everyday person um, to gay people themselves to trans people to gender uh, theorists all across the board have have uh, recognized that defining homosexuality by sex because it has the word sex in it is nonsensical that nobody does nobody thinks about the sex of their partner they think about the gender of their partner and that's why if you look up most working definitions uh, and most uh, sort of largely agreed upon definitions of homosexuality, you will recognize that most people now re use it to refer to being with somebody who's the same gender as you because we don't, because it doesn't make sense to sort the world by sex. We don't know people's sex. It's very hard to actually figure out what people's sex is. So can you, uh, can you by chance show me this widely agreed upon definition of homosexuality that doesn't include same sex activity, please? Oh yeah, absolutely. Please go, take your time to go to any of the, the. You can go to the W path. You can go to the APA. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do your homework for you because you refuse to study for this. Um, there are thousands of, of organizations, not just organizations, but also groups of people, individuals such as myself who actually live uh, uh, as a gay person um, and as a trans person. There are cis. There are trans people. This is a. It, this is a widespread thing. Everyone, like, I, like I'm not kidding you. I, I'm very, very deeply connected into the queer community communities um across uh, here in here in my area and also in the united states i'm very plugged into this i promise you that a lot of people um if not the vast majority no longer and, and they never really did the reason why this term has changed is because people realized actually we don't really use sex we don't really like take genetic tests and find out if that's the person we're attracted to we identify uh gendered traits that we uh, that we are that we like or find attractive and then we follow those we follow the social aspects so in yeah. the in the uh, in the private chat, which I just posted up, that's the APA dictionary for psychology, and they define homosexuality, sexual mm -hmm. attraction or activity between members of the same sex. APA oh, was one of they your probably haven't updated it left yet. Yeah. APA was one of your reference points for the authority that you wanted to appeal to. Oh, I didn't in order actually. To if you hold on a second, homosexuality did you not listen? Here we have. Oh, I'm sorry. Did here you we not have listen? the definition from the APA itself. Did and I, it's right did there. I not, did mean, I not, did, excuse would me. you like the link to it? Did you not listen? Wait, is private chat on screen? Okay, let's take a look here. Homosexuality, the APA dictionary is sexual attraction or activity between members of the same sex. Oh, interesting. I guess the APA should probably update that, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. the American Psychological Association, yeah, totally. your, your grandest appeal to authority. <laughs> excuse me, that wasn't. That it's activity between same sex. Uh, and hold of on course a second. it is. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before you grandstand, before you grandstand, excuse me, <laughs> but um, it's really funny that uh, <laughs> you literally didn't listen and now you're desperately trying to rewrite the narrative. Did you not recall when I listed about what... 10 different sources from which I would pull Name from more. this. Yeah, I'll sure. Look it up. I'll look I, them I, up I just gave time. you a ton. And guess what? Do you want to know what else is important? The self-identity of the people there. Because guess what? Sometimes, uh -huh. here's, here's, a, here's a wild one. And I know, I know you're going to like this one. Sometimes, official sources, those authorities that you are trying to desperately appeal to now, when you, interestingly, yes, you literally did. You started this argument. No, by, I just pulled up a me. definition. Excuse me. I am talking right now. I am talking right now, Papa. I'm talking right now. Please hold your, hold your tongue. Okay. Um, what you appealed to at the beginning was a dictionary definition. That is a, a definitional appeal to authority. I am not appealing to authority. I am saying that there are a lot of people who have studied this who recognize this. There are enormous swaths of the actual community that uses these identifiers that recognize this. And guess what? Sometimes 
things don't change very quickly. Sometimes people, uh, there are incorrect things. I mean, fuck, we all know this, right? We know that there's outdated medical textbooks that are used in schools all over the country. Knowledge is never perfectly disseminated. So sure, maybe the APA has a- I thought you just said this was all widely <clears throat> agreed upon. Excuse me. Maybe the APA has a listed definition that I per personally feel is out of date. And the cool thing that I can do is I can make an argument for why that's the case instead of an appeal to authority, which is what you're doing right now. The reason- You're the one who named Excuse them. me, excuse me. <laughs> The reason why I brought up, I didn't just name one, you'll notice. I named many. And the reason why I named many was to show that there are many sources that believe this. Now, perhaps I was incorrect. And I can, I can admit if that the APA, perhaps in this particular definition, but I'd be interested to see how frequently they update their online dictionary versus what their actual materials show. Because as I understood it, they'd change their definition, but I could be wrong. I'd, I'd be open to looking into this and saying, okay, the APA, I don't really think that they're on the right level. Maybe they have a different approach to it. But regardless, nonetheless, um, there are numerous sources we can go to for this. It is you who is insisting that we appeal to authority. It is I who is presenting an argument for why I believe the thing that I believe. You don't have an argument for why you believe the thing that you believe. You have no argument for why that, we should... That, Excuse well, me, I'm not me... done. I was talking. Are you ever going to be done? <laughs> uh, no, not if you keep interrupting me. I'll just talk forever. <laughs> if you keep interrupting me like a child, then sure, I'll just keep going. Super, super easy. Um, yeah, so... Mm -hmm. um, uh, because you want to insist that, oh, this is, uh, for some reason, and again, this whole point doesn't really make sense. So you're mad. Are you, sorry, are you, I, I, I forgot to ask. Are you gay? No. Okay, all right. So you're mad that maybe some gay people in your, some trans people in your mind might be hypocrites because they say they're gay and their partners are okay with them being gay. Their gay partners are okay with them being gay and you're mad about it as a straight guy where it doesn't affect you at all. Like that's this whole point. But let's where say- Where did anger come in? Well, I mean, you express frustration, I should say. Not no, necessarily anger. I didn't anger. express anything. I, well, I was just telling you that there's a, such a thing as a logical fallacy and what I'm saying. But that's not a logical is, fallacy, is it, right? Well, like, I'm gonna explain to you now how it is a logical fallacy. Okay. Homosexuality is always going to be defined by two people of the same sex Engaging in same, in, well, there's no definition that you've provided that that's incorrect. That's widely agreed upon. But not only that. Oh, uh, sorry. You wanted me to do an appeal to authority? That's or what would you, you said. Like to, or you would you like me to construct an argument? Agreed upon. Widely yeah, agreed sure. upon. But yeah, that okay, aside, fine. Hold that on. aside, wait, it wait, would wait, have I can, no, I can tackle let this me head finish. On. Oh, okay, let it would have no merit if we changed it so drastically as to say it was no longer people of the same sex engaging in sexual activity you would not be able to quantify who was a homosexual and who wasn't. Oh, I strongly disagree. Oh, I strongly disagree. Here's the thing, because uh, let me <laughs> let me tell you this. Let's pretend that there isn't consensus, and I'm going to show you that you can construct a perfectly meaningful definition and more useful definition of homosexuality that does not have to use sex. Watch, okay? Ready? Mm -hmm. Imagine that all of the gay people in the world or many of the gay people realize that they don't actually and never actually did look for sex, but instead they were looking for gender because gender is something that is a, a, a mixture of, a, a, it's a matter of identity that has a whole bunch of ties to aesthetic decisions, presentations, etc. Would it not then make sense if those gay people, the people who you are talking about, the people who are actually gay, which you are not, or at least you claim not to be, maybe you are, I don't know. Uh, you can lie about that, I guess. But um, those, gay, those gay people who are actively engaging in homosexual relationships say, wait a second, actually, you know, we don't really use sex. People put it this way because you know, we there's been all of this confusion about what these two terms actually mean. And then somebody comes along like myself and says, hey, wait a second, people don't actually choose their partners because of sex. That's very, very rare. Maybe some people do. Maybe some people are like, sorry, I need to, uh, I need to do a chromosomal test to make sure that you are who you say you are. No, they use gender. Do you see how I do not need to make a single appeal to, uh, to authority? but you insisted that we have appeals to authority. So I gave you some sources, but my argument stands on its own because I don't need to appeal to authority. I can lay out the logic like I just did. Oh, okay, well, let me lay out much simpler, easier logic. If you engage in same-sex activity, you're a homosexual. Nobody really has trouble defining who's of, who's of which sex unless they pretend to be of the opposite sex. Oh, are you saying it's, I'm, pre oh wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Are you saying I'm pretending? Uh, well, of course you're pretending. Do you wanna, do you wanna call me a Teesler? I don't know what that is. You don't know what the T-slur is? I think you do. I have would, no Would you like to get is. that out of your? Would you like to get that out of your system? No, you've already called me a pretender. You may as well just say it. I don't know what that is. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Sure. You what don't. is it? Oh yeah. 
Oh, you know, I can't say it on my stream. I don't want to get my stream taken down. I didn't say anything about anything. Oh, you, that's okay, something just, that you're. No, no. I just wanted to listen. I just wanted to weird imposition. Oh no, no. I just I wanted. To, I just wanted to give you the opportunity if you wanted to, because you know you're here call, saying that I'm pretending when I'm very, I'm very, very open about who I am. I'm not pretending anything. Well, I mean, yeah, you're you're pretending to be a, a female. You're, and you're and you're pretending to really, be you're pretending not. to be you're pretending to be Big Papa fascist on the internet, and you're pretending to be a man. Well, too. that's. Well, that see, that's true. I am pretending to be Big Papa fascist on yeah, the internet. Nice. And, and you're pretending the, to be a man. The entire, the and you're entire, pretending to be intelligent. Point, and you're and pretending to be all kinds point, of things. The, the entire point of that uh, is obvious. In this particular case, what we're talking about is same-sex activity. And in regards to same-sex activity, it's very useful to just say the word homosexual. Quick question. Quick question. Same-sex activity. Do you want to know Instead, the same? you went on this weird, weird <clears throat> diatribe about how you know you can mix, mix and match all kinds of different genders and this and that because oh, yeah, it's absolutely. so complex when it's really quite simple. Oh, no, it's super. It is. No, you're right. It is super simple. You're just refusing to engage with it. If I was to talk to the APA right now, do you want to know the argument that I would make? Sure. The exact same argument that I'm making to you. I would point out to the APA that no person I, I, I don't I've never met one. I don't think there is one. I, I don't believe there's a single gay person on the entire planet who has ever sought out a partner based on their chromosomes. They have sought them out based on a combination of expression, self-identity, uh, perhaps secondary sex characteristics, which can often and be a penis. Changed. Yeah, maybe a penis. I mean, there's yeah, also penis. and there's also gay men who like uh, who, who don't like penises, actually, believe it or not. Yep. It's funny. It's almost like being gay doesn't have anything to do with your sex, but more has to do with your gender expression. So, so would you say uh, wait, that? Uh, and, and, wait, hold on. Before before you go off on this, let me pre prevent, present another example. A gay man, sure. a, a two you know two gay men, one who is cis, a cis gay man, and a trans gay man. They will identify as gay. They live a gay life, and when they go outside, people will identify them as gay as well. Simple as that. What's so, a trans gay man? You mean a woman who is no, is I mean a to trans a man. man. I need. I mean a trans man. I, I I understand you're trying to to be funny again or whatever. I'm not trying not, to be funny. funny. I'm just asking you to clarify. Do you so not that know? We do you not know what a trans what man is? About. Do you not know what a trans man is? I'm just making sure that we're on the same page. Okay. Are you saying well, that a trans man is somebody who's a woman? No. Who is, or Incorrect. biologically at least was a woman? biologically what? Biologically female, assigned female at birth. Yes, but not biologically okay. a woman because okay, no one no so, one is biologically. So so excuse me. No, no, no. I need to be clear here. No one is biologically a woman. Your claim is ridiculous. We've already settled this. No, we never settled it. Yes, we already did. We settled this in the beginning. We settled that no, there is there didn't. is. So wait, hold on. Let me be clear then. Do you think that there is no difference between gender and sex? No, there's an absolute difference between gender and sex. Okay, then what's the difference? Uh, the difference is, is that gender is a social construction. Yeah, so is sex. Sex is an, obje sex is an objective reality. No, it is not. Sex is yes, a, it, it is. No, it is not. Yes, sex, it is. No, it is not. Sex is also is also a social construction. It's just a no, different. It's not. No, yes, it is. It is just a no, different. No, it's not. It is objectively a social construction. And let me and I will point this out to you because we have different ways of identifying sex. Did you know that the way that doctors even identify sex these days is different? It is a social construct. It is just a different type of social construct. Sex is a social construct that, in the current time. Uh, is identified usually by a chromosomal test that reveals certain indicators. Uh, there are now like, I think, I want to say there's like 13 or 14 sex indicators. There's this really, really amazing uh, poster that I share very frequently that was put together uh, by Scientific American. That, it's um, actually just determined by if you have testes or not, usually. <sighs> Excuse me. I was talking. I know you, I don't know, you you're itching to get those balls out there, but um, but but yeah, um, there is a really really cool poster that was made by a whole team of scientists at with in in, in a partnership with uh, Scientific American that shows how modern scientists will measure sex in humans, and it's actually a rather complex process because it turns out there's a lot more intersex people than we thought. When we when we thought that je that all that sex was was whether you had a penis or not, like uh, like hundreds of years ago, because we didn't have the science to understand that, we realized that that was a flawed definition, and we up the definition it's a social construct it's just a different type of social construct once again it's actually keep, that's actually me. inaccurate i wasn't you're finished with my the, sentence you're i wasn't finished the sterling study what? and the sterling study has been refuted what's the, the sterling Stur study claims the Stur that, the, that up to 1.5 percent of the population is intersex and it's not they use the wrong criteria would you like me to source the reputation to it no because that's not what i'm talking about i'm not citing that i wasn't citing any sterling study 
I don't no, know what you're you talking weren't. about. Okay. No, I wasn't. Go ahead. I was I, the only thing that I cited was a a really helpful infographic that helps identify the ways that science now is able to determine or at least to have come to some sort of understanding of what biological sex is. Sex is a is a category that will change again in the future. It's changed before and it is different than gender. And because it is different than gender, we can acknowledge that there are better ways to use these terms. You just refuse, you just have throughout this entire conversation, what has been demonstrated is that you refuse to engage it because you don't like it. That's what it boils down to. You it's don't nothing like to do it. with like. Yes, it is. Or you're not even. You're not even. Wait, hold on, hold on a second. Do with just simply looking at logical conundrums and that's pointing not a logical conundrum. Uh, my logic yes, is one. Is. No, my logic is completely unflawed here. The thing that you keep saying is that you don't like it. You're not even a gay man, but you, for some reason you're bothered by the idea that a gay man could like a gay could like a gay trans man. That is it not logic. That is your feelings. Bothered. That is your feelings. That's nothing to do with being bothered. Yes, it by is. That is your feelings. Has to do specifically with pointing out that it's paradoxical. It's That's very not paradoxical. paradoxical. That's not what paradox means. Paradoxical. You, you just keep saying that because you yes, feel because you, you want it to be circles. true. I'm not running in circles. Running in I've been circles. very. I, this is hilarious. Like I've been very clear with mine, so. and all you've said is mm -mm, I don't like it, and then gotten mad when ideas are different than what you want them to be. This is such a weird no, like. No, this I'm is such simply, a weird. This is such out, a weird control freak out. way. Like a weird control freak way of wanting to control a community and a, and a group of people and words that you don't even use. You're not a gay person. You don't even seem to have interest in being gay or what it means to be gay so first of all this is a concern troll from the get-go you don't give a shit about any of this or do you and if you do but you don't why? you don't think it's useful so for us to have identifiers for what's gay oh yeah of course it's useful but okay those, but so those why, 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 why wouldn't i want to know me. what the identifier was then <laughs> yes. excuse me of course it's useful for us to have certain identifiers mm -hmm. but we have to ask for what purpose and why and I don't think that your identifier does a particularly good job. Once again, I will state my reasoning for the sixth time. Hey, we're getting some echo here. Echo. Yeah, I'm hearing that too. Yeah, maybe a uh, test. Okay, it was uh, it was Big Papa fascist. Okay, um, fashy audio. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, the what what you've refused to acknowledge is that guess what? Using sex as the basis for defining homosexuality is neither socially useful or scientifically useful. When somebody asks, when your doctor asks you, are you gay? They're asking, are you, are you dating somebody who identifies as a man? That is what they're asking about. They don't care. They don't, they're not asking about whether you, whether your partner has had a chromosomal test to prove that they're a man so that then you can say officially that, and you have had a chromosomal test and you can prove that your, your XY chromosome matches up with their XY chromosome. That, that's, that's not what they're asking. They're just trying to figure out what type of relationship you're in so that they can understand what social risks you might have. That's it. Oh, well, let's it's bring simple. it to you then. It's, that, it's you can apply it, that you can apply it even across, across the board to gender. Would you say that two biological men who are engaged in sexual activity would be homosexuals? What's that? I'm sorry? Would you say that two biological men engaged in same-sex activity well, what would they, be homosexuals? What do, they, what do they identify as? So uh, that's not my question. Well, that's important information for the question. Well, it's it? also important to say that w regardless of what they identify as, what would you explain the phenomenon of two same-sex people engaged in sexual activity? What would you explain that as? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't you know. You don't know. I don't know because you, I don't know don't anything know. about their identity. What, and what would it right. matter? You, you, like, I don't know so anything, to, I don't know so anything you, about so their biology. Social, you, so you have to have social identifiers in order yeah. to what, identify oh, yeah. specific activities? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's super simple. Is that right? Yep. Oh yeah, you do that all the time. Same thing as if I was to say Andrew is fucking Andrew, um, or mm -hmm. Andrew is fucking. Let's use a different name so it's a little clearer. Maybe Aunt Andrew is fucking Todd. Um, sure. And if we were to say that, well, I would need to have social context for what who those people were and why that matters. Same exact okay, so thing. You, you, you are not stating. You you're, wait, wait. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I was finishing my <laughs> sentence. God, you really, really can't. You really just can't handle me finishing sentences, can you? It's really wild. Anyway, uh, we when when you ask a question like that, uh, you ha there is context that's required. This is true about anything. This is not a hard concept. You're trying to act like very surprised, like this is a big thing, but this isn't true. If you were okay. to walk up to a random person and you were to say, oh, uh, Andrew is fucking Todd, they would go, I'm sorry, who's Andrew and who the fuck is Todd? Unless they knew who they were. Okay, so Same way, it is hard so to answer if this. somebody is gay without knowing what their if, identity if, is. If Simple. somebody handed you a note uh -huh. that said two same, let's say you're in a lab uh -huh. and somebody handed you a note and it said two biological men are mm -hmm. engaged 
in sexual activity okay. and yeah. you had two boxes to check and one said heterosexual and the other said homosexual, would you go ask them what their identifiers were before you check one of the boxes? Fuck yeah, because that's the way that you're acting. <laughs> that's the way you do your homework. Absolutely. Of course it makes <laughs> Do you think that's you, you think that do you think <laughs> Oh what? wait a minute. So you are mad. Look at I, just, I can't believe it. It's like what? I, I knew would, it. I knew would, you're bothered. You you're not go, even. Wait a second. You're not you, even. You you're not go, even gay. You're not even gay. You, but you're. I'm but to you're this out. You know, I'm sorry. You're not even gay. But your control freak ass wants to decide how any everyone else defines and uses the term gay. This is so sad. Like I don't know why you care. Why do you care? Well, I care about the definitions of reality. Ah, uh, yeah. Care. No, no, no. But Let's more, be real. We but, know why you care. More, you want to control other people's yeah. actions. Right. Right, sure. You want to target people. Except, except you seem to be the one who is adamant about controlling who can identify what as what, not no, me. So that. I'm just trying to get definitions straight. What's ever, that doesn't even make what's sense. Inter what's very interesting about this is I just asked you uh -huh. how you would describe a behavior. And you're saying without going and personally asking the people. Oh, wait a what second. What they hold identify on a as, you can't describe the behavior oh, as oh, 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 insane. Sorry, I wasn't trying to interrupt. I was just recognizing what you're asking here. Oh, oh are, are you are you asking if oh, did, uh, did the if, light bulb go off? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. A light bulb went off once you explained yourself more clearly. Interesting that adding context and being clear with your language is a thing that helps other people understand you. I know that comes very hard to fashy types like yours. You don't really understand that you have to talk to other people and that, you know, socializing exists. You just kind of want to tell people what they are. But um, interestingly, that sort of information is super, super important. Let me explain. Oh, if if, if okay. I was told that two biological men, both of whom have penises, were doing anal sex, then I would be able to go, oh, wow, they're having anal sex. They're having pen penis in ass sex. Wow, cool for them. And if I found out then that both of them identify as men, that would be a gay relationship. If I found out that one of those people um, was, a, uh, was a woman who identifies as a woman, then that wouldn't be gay sex anymore, would it? See, this is easy. So this is this is very. This. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. My logic is consistent here. Your logic is inconsistent. Okay. Well, then let's see if we can consistently get you to apply it one more time. Please. Yes. You're in a lab. Yes. You're in a lab. Mm -hmm. They bring you a slip. Okay. And they say these are two biological men who are engaged uh -huh. in homosexual activity. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. They're engaged in homosexual activity. Sure. Or let's say that you have to be the quantifier of whether or not it's homosexual activity. Uh -huh. Oh, cool. So they hand I you a slip that. and there's there's two boxes there to check. Mm -hmm. And one of them says heterosexual. One of them says homosexual. You don't know anything about these people other than they're engaged in homosexual activity. Which box would you check? Okay, well, if I've already been told that they are engaging in homosexual activity and uh, well, real quick question. Can I are, are my coworkers incompetent or are they competent? Forget for your oh, no, no, this is part. really super important. Are in this hypothetical, are my coworkers competent in data gathering or incompetent in data gathering? Let's say that they're a mix. Well, then I would have to go do my own double check and I would just walk into the other okay. room and ask them and say, Hi, gotcha. are you two are are you two men? But other than that, if they if if we assume that I have competent coworkers and they were able to, and they gave me a paper that said these homosexual assigned male at birth men are having sex with each other yes that would be homosexual because guess what that has the context necessary to identify a homosexual relationship wow i see really? but, but if you were left super to your easy. own damn did, but if you're is left that an to your own? own but if left to your own devices and all you saw was that these are two biological men engaged mm -hmm. in same-sex activity and that was pertinent yes. for some reason to whatever the test was that you were going to run sure. and you needed to check a box that said either heterosexual or homosexual you would what I would not say, check the homosexual oh, no, box. It'd be super simple. There's this really amazing thing that we do in science all the time. I would point out that we have a we have a wrong premise. That there's a problem in our premise. That's what I would point out, and then we would do better science than whatever silly anti-scientific uh, bullshit that you've brought up. Yeah, it's super. It's super easy. We do this kind of stuff all the time. We revise the questions that we're asking in it in an experimental setting to be more accurate all the time. This is not shocking. Like I think you think this is shocking because my guess is that you've never actually worked with science or anything like that. But as somebody who has worked with science extensively, um, yeah, it's a it's a pretty simple thing to do. You just need to make sure you have the information necessary to come to the correct conclusions. Um, so really quick, um, Andrew, if you want to respond to that, and then we're going to go into the Q&A, and you guys can do final thoughts after oh, that. I'm good. Hell yeah. All right, so let's get, just jump into the Q&A then. Yeah. All right, we got a lot. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do some, I'm going to pull up the ones that I can right now, and then I wrote down the other ones. Oh, um, okay, so from Mayo, question for Demon Mama. How was your relationship with your father growing up? 
I mean, is this do, wait? Do you do you just do all questions? Yeah. Ooh, wow. You that's, don't have to answer all of them. I mean, though, come but... on. Wait, wait oh, let me just explain this real quick. So, for those who don't know, this is a um, this is what is this is what is called a, a homophobic dog whistle. Um, there's a joke that's been going around for decades that all uh, gay people were abused by their fathers. Um, and that's what's being going on here. But uh, for what it's worth, growing up, my relationship was great. When I came out as uh, when I came out as trans, it was not so great. Okay. From Joseph um, for Brittany Dean Mama and Andrew, uh, do you think that trans people are oppressed? And if so, in what ways andrew why don't you go first i think it's very difficult to oppress something that we can't even seem to agree we can quantify in any way shape or form except i identify as such so i don't know like in every other form of oppression you would have some type of objective reality wouldn't you like for instance if we were oppressing black people we would have this cool identifier that's instant and immediate that we could look to to categorize that in this particular case, in this particular identifier, Demon Mama says, it's just how we identify. There is no way to quantify it. There's no way to nothing. It's just whatever I say goes. Uh, let me correct. Uh, let me correct Andrew there. First of all, yes, obviously, in our society, trans people are indeed oppressed. Um, and in the ways they are oppressed is uh, has been Wi widely studied. First of all, um, trans people, uh, trans youth especially, have an incredibly high rate of suicide because they have an incredibly high rate of social rejection. Their families will often um, discriminate against them or throw them out of their house, which is something that happened to me, by the way. Um, they will just throw them out simply based on the identity of them being trans, and this leads to them usually having homelessness and hardship early in their life, which contributes to severe mental health outcomes. This is a, a form of oppression, absolutely. Trans people are also way... Uh, like 50 percent i believe is the was the latest quote you, i might be slightly off on that number um more likely to be oppressed um to be discriminated against when, when job hiring this has been studied in double blind studies and um unfortunately that's the truth um also there is uh we could go i could go into a whole lot of other things and uh, one of the greatest ways that i could bring up is the way that i was treated if you'll notice that the very first question on here was a ages old um a transphobic and homophobic stereotype that supposedly because i'm i'm trans or gay it must be because my father abused me that alone should show you that we are not treated with respect in the society we're not treated as normal people i don't see any questions towards andrew about whether he was beaten by his father or anything like that this is obviously targeted at me because I am gay and trans. So there's a couple examples. And secondly, with regard to something like a race, it's really funny that you bring that up because guess what? There's a lot of questions about how you figure out what race someone is. What happens if somebody has light skin, but their, one of their parents is black? Now, I don't know how you feel about race mixing. I hope that won't weigh in here at all. I have some worries about perhaps what your positions might be on that. But I believe that somebody, even if they have light skin and they're parent is black and they're tr mistreated because their parent is black and because they are mixed race they they could still consider themselves black um we we have all kinds of of complicated ways that we figure this stuff out and um but we but we can obviously do that and race is also a social construct it is a different social construct but it is a social construct i hope that answers the question okay um all right so from tyler bluntman um, Demon pretended a vaccine to a virus states it's safe for women, but kills men instantly. If women don't take, if the women don't take, they die by the virus. Should trans women who want to live take the vax? Um, I mean, this is a silly, this is a silly question. And I can tell it wasn't asked by like, a, oh, oh, <laughs> hey, Tyler Bluntman, my old friend. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, what an interesting, what an interesting fella. Um, that guy, by the way, just for some little context, um, again, it, to, to tie back to the question about like whether trans people are oppressed. After I went on a single debate with Tyler Bluntman in which he repeatedly misgendered me to my face, uh, Tyler Bluntman uh, ordered his fan, like literally asked his fan base to harass me made multiple videos about me where he called me uh, a, like a, a fake woman and all kinds of things like that and his fans mul multiple of his fans who said Tyler Bluntman Tyler Bluntman and then told me to die or kill myself very interesting super good faith questions just wanted to give a little bit of context for that but let's continue um to do this so 
What's that? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, this question was directed to the question. Yeah, the question question was directed to me. I know you want to talk for me and whatever, but that's fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, no. Obviously, uh, this question doesn't make any sense because in a medical context, they don't use terms like. I mean, some some doctor offices do because not everyone's like. Uh, not all medical systems have actually kept up to date with how current medical definitions are. But any doctor worth their salt would recognize that a. Um, a vaccine that is dangerous because of your uh, because of your uh, chromosomal or genetic risks that they would give that to you on or off based on those genetic characteristics. This has nothing to do with gender. Um, you know m what is what my body the, the the unique challenges of my body as a trans woman are between me and my doctor, and my doctor knows what my risks are. My doctor talks to me about those risks. Obviously, uh, like having been exposed to testosterone for most of my uh, for my high school years and most of my puberty that puts me at higher risk for heart heart disease and my doctor takes note of that it's nobody else's business that's not gender that's sex okay. so uh, to answer that question it wasn't to you it, wasn't, it doesn't matter can i answer that question yeah quickly because we have a lot of questions and okay. we um i'll just do it i'll just do it very quickly the answer is is uh none of them would take it because they would you know it would biologically kill them that's uh that's the answer that uh, Demon Mama was actually looking for, but wait, that's literally Demon what I Mama said. Though, can't, wait, that's Demon, literally Demon what I Mama said. Can't state it. Wait, that's literally what I said. It, I literally said, said that. Yes, I said that in the literal first sentence. Are oh, you? Okay. Are you for real? No, that's great. Yeah, that's great, actually. Okay. Oh my God, so from, that's really funny. From Alan, from Alan W to um, Demon. Uh, generally speaking, how does transitioning from one sex to another change one's preferences in dating? As a woman now, do you look to date men or still women? Oh, um, cool. That's like a really um, good faith question. Um, it, it can change. It can change. Depends a lot on the individual. For me, um, I have always dated women and mostly dated women um, since then. But I am, uh, you know, admittedly, as I've grown older, I'm more open to I'm like, I consider myself like uh, slightly slightly bisexual i guess but it's like it doesn't go that far i'm mostly attracted to femme people mostly attracted to women okay. but some other people are not like that some people do um find that when they come out as trans once they transition that they feel more free or perhaps they discover things they didn't know about themselves these are these are complicated processes and i don't really it's there's no single rule okay so from lysium podcast to demon mama would it be okay if someone in a relationship even even through marriage never told their partner that they were trans um i mean it would probably uh depend on the context right um like i i don't think that um i don't think that like even in a marriage context that like m necessarily marriage partners have a right to all genetic information about anyone else in the same way that like um i would assume that like uh, i would assume that we wouldn't like force a wife to like to like say every single experience that has ever happened to them to their husband like just because they're married um i generally think that it's a good thing to communicate these things um but i don't think that you have to um i think there's probably some situations like i mean i don't know what if you transition what if you transition when you're 16 and uh and you get married to somebody who just really fucking loves you at age 50 and they've never they've never given a shit about anything like they just like you oh, i think that would be perfectly fine to never bring that up it depends on the context again once again these are social contexts you have to these things have to be worked out peacefully and and reasonably among the people involved okay now i have to do um the ones that i jotted down because i can't reach them now um all right so from phoenix to big papa fascist what relevance does your genitalia chromosomes etc have to do um have to do have what chromosomes have to you if you're not attracted to someone? What do out. chromosomes have to do with stating what your yeah, biological? I'm guessing that's what I meant. But it says yeah. Have okay. To so do. what what we're talking about is just simply stated biological status, and that's what's objectively real. And so what what does that have to do with me? I like to know what's real, and I like to know what's not real. It's very simple. Okay. Um, all right, so from Joseph for Demon Mama and Andrew, do you think trans people, oh, this fucker, he wrote it like eight times the same question. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so um, from something from nothing, can you ask both of them to show on a doll? No, not doing that one. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, there you go. <laughs> I told you um, it's interesting. It's interesting yeah, we'll that even in these. the questions, even in the questions, the uh, the the mm -hmm. dis obvious prejudice is made plain. This I, isn't I, new. Is... This happens to me in most of my debates. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm totally sure it does. Yeah, I'm sure so many people ask you how, like, uh, you know, how many guys fucked you when you were a kid. I'm sure that happens all the time, dude. It does, and, oh, and yeah, usually totally. being accused of being gay when I talk about these issues Damn. is paramount, like you did. Damn, um, I'm sure. I bet everybody buys yeah. that. Yeah. So for Crazy Hole, can you ask Demon if she was born this way or it's a product of nurture? Oh, I've no, I've no fucking idea. I don't think there's any way to know that. Um, I, I, I mean, there's some evidence that points that like being trans is, is highly associated with in, intrauterine um, hormone levels, but unfortunately that technology didn't exist when I was born. So there's no possible way I could ever know that whether it's a product of, of, of some strange occurrence, some, some large deterministic, you know, factors of this experience versus that experience versus whether I was born that has no bearing on whether or not I'm valid as a human and should be treated with respect. I believe that about everyone. I believe that about anything. I mean, there's so many things that you could apply this to. Um, we can't always know, like, we, we don't know if the world is even, a, if the universe is like a deterministic universe, like a mathematically deterministic universe. So I don't really care. When I try to think about, um, when I try to think about, uh, um, like, ethical prescriptions for the world when i think about philosophical positions that i hold i think about um the things that we can know and and building a world that uh treats people fairly um regardless of whether they were born that way or they became that way like i don't think that that like i don't know like there's a whole but i could come up with some hypotheticals like for example i mean what if somebody like randomly like in, at some point in their life they uh i don't know they hit their head or something and the next day they woke up gay were they always gay was it a product of the thing who knows maybe they became gay because they got so scared in the moment when they hit their head that they didn't want to live their life as a lie anymore and they just wanted to be gay maybe something changed in their head when they hit their head nobody can ever know that and it doesn't matter um we should still pe treat people with respect and we shouldn't uh try and oppress them just because they're different than us all right, so from Joseph to Andrew, it doesn't hurt you to address Demon Mama and other trans people how they want to be addressed, so why not just do it? Well, see, we already went through this logical conundrum. Uh, if, if we can't quantify a hurt as something other than a feeling, how do you know it doesn't hurt me to not address them that way? Tell me how. What metric are you using? Oh, I mean, I already ta we already talked about this. I already, I already showed that there's oh, nothing. I mean, you're great at giving non-answers. You just go on these rambling diatribes that they, and you never oh, say yeah, anything. Totally, so totally. Tell I mean, me specifically, maybe you can use like 100 words or less. I mean, I already did this. I don't, I mean, do you want me to repeat my answer from before? It's super simple. We know that like, we know that fascists aren't killing themselves at mass levels um, because because they're not allowed to call trans people. Well, that's harm to you, not to me. What? Okay, so we're defining. He's he's. What, what the question what? was was to define how it hurts me, right? And you yeah. keep on defining how things hurt yeah, you. It, it, it doesn't. You're just a pussy, <laughs> right? See what I mean? So yeah. from from your perspective and your metric, yeah. right? Only your it, feelings. It only your feelings on the subject matter. Just like everything oh, oh, else in this oh, debate has been. Wait, wait. Let me be clear about this. By the way, I get called. I get disrespected all the time, and I'm still here. I'm, I, I've been I've had people throw in this actual panel people ask me about whether I was abused by my father as a child I get transphobic hate and, and homophobic hate all the time and I'm tough enough to keep going anyway You are mad that you can't impose what you think someone's identity is on someone else Do you think else. those are the only forms of hate that you can get? Do you think that I don't get no. hate mail constantly? Because sure, I do Yeah, but, but you probably all but let's time. be real but you probably deserve it You go around being really wait wait <laughs> right. let, and let me explain why matter. wait and let me explain why you deserve it you probably mm -hmm. deserve it because you go around being horrible to people and those people don't like you for that If you're horrible to people if you go around being a cruel bastard people might treat you like a cruel bastard I'm very sorry. Maybe that, that's that, why that, you get all your hate mail. Oh for sure I'm sure I'm sure that all of the hate mail that talks about how I'm a disgusting tea slur because I don't want to get us banned off of Twitch and uh, People who ask me about whether I was abused as a child trying to hurt my feelings I'm sure that oh, I'm sure that definitely has to do with how I engage with the world and not right. who I am So, so only your so only Again, your feelings matter crying yeah. you are just crying right, so your gonna, feelings matter we're gonna move on so from kenneth mclean 
How did Demon Mama know they were a woman stuck in a man's body? What exactly does it feel like to what does it to feel like a woman? Demon Mama can't answer. Um, excuse, I mean, wow, that was very coy. Uh, thanks for trying to answer for me. I didn't know your name was Demon Mama, but um, I guess we can work on that. Um, we can work with that if you want to be Demon well, Mama. Well, it's too. a social like, construction. If I want it to be, it can be. Oh yeah, totally. But I, but I will, I, I, I will sue you for IP infringement though, because uh, thankfully, IP mm -hmm. infringement is a different type of social, uh, social construct. It would be very, well, fun. I mean, it'd be very at the funny. Well, I mean, of our living conditions, I think I'd win the suit. Oh, I don't know. About, I don't know about that. Oh, what's that? Are you trying to? Are you? Do you think I'm poor or something? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. Seriously, I want to know. What, what was? What, what were you? What did you mean by that? Nothing. Go ahead. Uh, interesting, because you have a green screen background, so for all we know, you could be living in a pile of monster cans and cigarettes and, like, used condoms from your wanks. But um, That's true. Yeah, uh, probably do, to be completely honest. A bunch of, cr a bunch of crusty towels in the background. Um, yeah, so uh, how did Demon Mama know they were a woman stuck in a man's body? What is exactly does it feel like to feel like a woman? Uh, I never saw of myself as a woman stuck in a man's body. Um, that's not how I look at it. I don't think that's... I mean, I'm not a duelist. I'm sure there are probably some duelists, but I, you'd have to ask the duelist. I'm not a dualist. I don't believe that there's like a separate soul. I just believe that gender is a matter of identity that I identify much stronger with what with what in our society is understood to be the social expression of woman. And therefore, I express myself as a woman and I identify as a woman. It's that simple. And that's the thing. This when you use my when, when you approach with the definition that I have proposed that I have made a logical argument for here, it actually becomes quite simple to determine these things. There is like what it means to feel like a woman is completely different to every single person. And that's always been the case. It will always be the case. Even, uh, I mean, in fact, this was a huge part of, I believe it was uh, mostly in second wave feminism um, that that cis feminists, predominantly <coughs> cis feminists argued back and forth about what it means, what it, what it actually is like to feel like a woman. And as it turns out, that's a very difficult question because everybody has a different experience. Um, so from Lysium Podcast to Brit, can we turn on Twitch? Okay, we can't turn on the Twitch stream because um, after this we um, have, are having infrared on and he has been banned from Twitch, so we can't stream to Twitch. So Darn. Our two viewers are going to be very upset about it. <laughs> okay. So from Intellectual Midget, um, if we start questioning everything in the world and why is this labeled this way and not this way, it's a rabbit hole that goes that gets us nowhere if the science doesn't back it, reject it. Is that a question or? <laughs> I don't know who that was. Um, I mean, I can address question. that if you'd like. Um, that's not, oh. that's simply not true. We do this all the time. In fact, we have an entire, I mean, we have multiple professions that are literally devoted to this philosophy. You question everything in the world and you figure out why we call things the way that they, the, the reason that we do, and we, inf we improve it. Interestingly, um, interestingly, there are, there are all kinds of ways that we can improve the way that we talk. Humans have to like, like humans don't have like a, a, a me like a mental link. Um, we're not like bees. We don't like communicate via like pheromone signals in the air. We only communicate through words. We sit, we make words or we make symbols. And then those things, we have to figure out what those things actually mean. And if you know anything about translation or localization, you know, stuff like if you're like an anime fan, you might know a little bit about that. There's actually a lot that goes into that question. We have to figure out what we mean with the words that we say and how to make them make sense to other people. This is not a rabbit hole that gets us nowhere. It's the only thing that gets us anywhere. So to answer, so to answer that question, uh, if you have endless definitions and you have endless quantification, things become meaningless. This is why we established the alphabet, and my opponent conceded rather quickly, in fact, that it has to be quantifiable for it to be useful. And this is the whole problem when we have endless definitions for everything on planet Earth, is if you endlessly quantify everything, things lose their meaning very quickly. Okay. So from Jose Campus, um, wouldn't the needs of the individual supersede the collective, meaning what um, what demon mama wants for herself is more important than what others want for her? Uh, um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, the needs of the in individual supersede the collective meaning what I want for, I don't think that this, I don't think this really maps onto that perfect, uh, perfectly. We're talking about an inherently individualistic thing. Identity is inherently individualistic. Um, you, 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 only an individual can decide their identity. Like I said, I've already pointed this out with, uh, with, uh, 
uh, Big Papa fascist identifying as Big Papa fascist online. Only an individual can decide their identity. We do this already. I don't think it really maps on to like whether individual needs supersede the collective, but I think that even if we wanted to take it there, we could make a very easy argument that the, um, the net cost of the quote unquote collective learning to use a better form in fact there is no net loss that the entire collective benefits from a better de definition of gender that can also so you can kill two birds with one stone at the same time as improving the the collect the collective's understanding of what gender actually means you can also improve the quality of life of those people um who um are gender non-conforming bam you kill two birds with one stone it's just a better way to do it so to answer that question, you saw the uh, paradox that salt. happened More salt. When, when Demon Mama continuously says that only a person can be an identifier for their own identity, and yet gave specific examples of where that's not true multiple times. Okay, that's a very nice story. This, this, this is the run of the paradox. That's very nice, my friend. So from on Xverse, Andrew, are you hurt when someone assigned female at birth identifies as male? How does it feel? I don't know. How does a woman feel? <laughs> I think that was like a. How do we yeah. quantify it? Okay. How how come only the only the feelings of the transgender matter? Oh wow! Is this is this like wait? How old are you? Do you mind if I ask how old you are? I do. Okay. Well. I just I was going to say this is this is a mighty childish way of responding to a chatter. It just seems like mm. unbefitting of someone your age, but I could be wrong. Okay, so from Alan W. Is it true that the US, Brazil, Philippines and Thailand have the highest transgender demographics? If so, why is that? Um, I don't know for sure on the numbers. Um, there's a couple of I do know that Thailand has a um a particularly high um percentage. I don't know about the other um, examples, um, but there's a number of there's a number of potential um, reasons for that. For one, uh, Thailand is uh, one of the countries that was, um, I wouldn't say like um, like completely accepting, but they were more accepting than we were. Um, they uh, Thailand has has for a very long time had a concept of a third gender, and many trans people found themselves very comfortable in that um, definition of third gender, which they've had for a long time. As a result of that, it was normalized in Thailand, um, and you actually saw a lot of scientific advancement. For example, um, arguably the most uh, arguably the most talented um, you know uh, sexual reassignment surgeon in the entire world. Um, is from Thailand, and that was because, you know, the legal freedom was given um, for him to work with his patients without uh, being oppressed or being targeted or being hated. So I'm sure that has some something to do with it. Um, but, I mean, also, I don't know for sure about the other countries, but I do happen to know a little bit about Thailand's history um, with regard to the um, trans movement. Yep. Okay. So from Tyler Bluntman for Big Papa Fascists. How do you feel knowing that demon's response to what makes you, f what makes you a woman is just a begging the question fallacy? Rate your level of intellectual frustration from one to ten. I have, I don't have any frustration with it. The entire point of this debate is to point out the paradoxes, not be frustrated with them. Okay. Damn, too bad um, you didn't do that. <laughs> So from Onyx, Andrew, I asked if you are personally hurt, why did you dodge? Okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. From August Morgan uh, to Big Papa Fascist, why do you think other people should be able to determine your identity? Why do you seem to disagree with self-determination? It's not a disagree or agree concept. What I'm explaining very specifically is that there's many times where identity is established uh, where it's not a person establishing their own identity. And this is the conceptualization that I'm trying to get across. It's, it's actually really, really simple. Yeah, well, I mean, Doris just told it to you now, so you got it. Okay. Um, I have to get some of the ones that I wrote down now. Um, all right, so from Alan W. for Demon, uh, generally speaking, how does transitioning from one sex to another change one 
Did I ask this one already? Uh, change, change one's, one's preference. It, um, okay, I'm not sure. Oh, if I, I mean, I can go in further on that. Um, but sure. Well, no, I, let me see if I, I asked it. Okay, generally speaking, how does transitioning from one sex to another change one's preference in dating? As a woman, uh, do you look to date men or still women? Did we ask that one already? Yeah, I think that was the one, okay. but um, I can answer it again very quickly. Um, it varies greatly for the individual. For me, um, my like sexual attraction didn't really change very much. For others, that's not the case. It's very complicated. Um, it's not like um, there's not one single path. A lot of it has to do with um, who you are when you start transition. That's like the, I mean, obviously you don't like, it's not like you be like, l like transform overnight into a, like a, just a different individual. You're the same individual. You change yourself in the way that you want to express and you, you have that agency. And sometimes in that process, you discover more about yourself. Sometimes there's, you know, th sometimes you just feel more comfortable. There's a whole bunch of stuff to it. But for me, no. Um, yeah, that was the quick answer. Okay. Um, okay, so for Demon Mama, do you think that trans women should be able to play in women's sports? Um, yeah, of course. Um, it, there's a number of reasons for that. So um, there's been a lot of research into this. Um, as it turns out, many people don't know this, but uh, trans women have already been allowed to perform in women's support, uh, sports in the Olympics for well over a decade. I think it's closer to two decades now. Um, and there has never once been a trans woman medalist, regardless of how long um, she was on uh, hormones. As it turns out, um, there there's a lot of misinformation about um, how much of, an, of a quote unquote advantage trans people have. As it turns out, after about six months to one year of hormone treatment, most uh, of what we would consider biological uh, advantages are gone. And the ones that don't disappear don't actually impact the sport enough to be noticeable, to be even a blip on the radar. Um, so yeah, most of it is fear mongering. And if you actually look into a lot of the stories that people talk about of like oh this trans woman did this thing most of them are deeply misinformed or aren't telling the truth there's been a lot of those going around recently that have been pretty thoroughly debunked um there's also a really really good video that talks about um a recent study that argued uh that some some advantages may be preserved um this was one that was done in december of 2020 this study um was super super interesting but unfortunately had some actually pretty major flaws there's a video that was done by a um sports medicine uh graduate uh, uh a sports medicine uh i can't i can't remember the term what what is a sports medicine specialist um who graduated a couple of years ago from sports medicine does really really good videos about sports medicine jangles science lad recently did a full analysis of this paper from from his from his professional perspective with the degree that he has to literally read and analyze these papers was able to critique it and all kinds of things like that super super interesting but yes trans women um should be able to perform in women's sports and if we need to put if there there's a net, if it's necessitated that you need like a rule like six months on HRT or something like that, that's perfectly fine. It, we already do that all over the place. This is like mostly a non-issue that is um, whipped up by people who want you to be afraid of trans women as some sort of scary thing. When in reality, we're just awesome and sexy and cool. <laughs> okay. For, for Demon Mama, do you think it's, do you support um, for children to get um, transition surgery? Um well, okay, uh, this is a complicated question. Um, it is a very, very, very rare um, occurrence that uh, minors will receive transition-related surgery. It is almost, it almost never happens. Usually when it, if it does happen, um, I was, I was friends with one person who did have, um, uh, I, they were at the same surgery center that I was. They were like one of my roommates and, um, or like flatmates because we had like an apartment. But anyway, this person um, had, been expressing um, severe gender dysphoria. They'd made attempts on their life. Their family was fully supportive. And so between their doctor, their psychologist and the surgeon, they decided that it was appropriate for her to get uh, bottom surgery at age 16 instead of waiting until 18. Um, I think those sorts of situations are fine. They rarely ever happen as it is. And when it does happen, it is weighed between usually three or four um, medical professionals before any progress is made. So um, yeah, I, I think that there are circumstances in which it's correct. Most of the time it's best to wait until 18, but it really depends on the individual. If you're at, if, if there's a if there's a, a, a trans child who is tortured by um, their body, which is a well-recognized phenomenon, it does happen from time to time. If you're tortured to that degree, it is the only humane path to offer a, a surgery that alleviates that pain. 
Um, I can pull up some of these that are up here. So um, from Lysium Podcasts, to Demon Mama, would it be okay, according to your logic, if I identified the sky as purple? Um, I mean, I don't probably, know if that's a serious question. <laughs> probably, no, I, that doesn't sound like a serious question. A purple yeah, is a <laughs> purple is is a social construct that is defined as a wavelength, a certain wavelength of light. So you could, if you really wanted to, again, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, but you would probably not be using that social construct correctly or in an effective manner. So, I mean, you can, if you want to, but I don't think this is a very serious question. And also sometimes um, the sky is purple. Have you ever seen a sunset? Go outside, I, yeah, I have, touch actually. grass, touch grass, please. Um, Okay, so from Mayo to Demon Mama, do you want to have or adopt children? What age do you think are your views on sexuality should be taught to children? Um, I don't know. Uh, I can't have uh, like biological children. Um, just not can't happen. Um, but I might like to adopt children someday. And the age that I think that's that like sex and sexuality should be taught to children is probably pretty variable. Like it depends on like if, if you have a kid who starts puberty really early, you should probably teach them about sex and sexuality so they don't end up hurting themselves or getting abused by somebody else. Um, we have quite a lot of, of research that shows that um, that if you the the earlier like the closest to puberty that you teach kids about sex and sexuality they will they will they tend to be significantly safer much less likely to be abused and much more likely to report sexual abuse if they know what they're talking about so of course eth like there are many many ethical ways to teach young people about what it means to be sexual what sex is and we i mean we already do this already there's already puberty classes and everything and and whatnot in schools um i just think that it should be done um because it will Will help those children become better people yeah it's very simple you you can't you can't have children how come i can't have children because i um well because i don't have any balls anymore i got rid of them okay um so from tyler bluntman um for demon since race is a social construct should white men who identify as black men equally qualify for black only scholarships and race specific affirmative action uh this isn't oh this is tyler bluntman again oh my god oh he, <laughs> he asked this was his thing that he was kind of obsessed with and i had to explain this to him as well like as you can tell this guy's a little bit obsessed with me it's it's I would be flattered if it wasn't so um, toxic and whatnot. But um, since race is a social construct, should white men identify as black men equally qualify? Um, I don't think that that's how that it works right now. I think um, uh, that most scholarships are like based off of your like socioeconomic background as opposed to your literal race. As far as I know, there is no like college or scholarship that requires you to submit like a genetic test. Um, so that probably wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, race is a social construct, but it is a different social construct than gender. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, for example, like race can correspond to a lot of different things. And, and in fact, there have been numerous iterations of how we understand race over time. As of right now, I think that the like the running um, consensus among scientists is that uh, like race is is most accurately understood as like geographical cl like clines and ancestry from ge geographical clines that's really complicated um i think that um that most most schools don't really use race like genetic race they use a good faith understanding of like your background so if you're like a if you're like a white guy who 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 grew up in a in a in a, a, a city somewhere like i don't know whatever and your parents were white and whatever they're probably not going to consider you black for the purpose of that scholarship because that scholarship is designed to help black people who are who are societally um you know oppressed yeah so there you go could, could it also just be that there's a really simple metric that we might be able to use to determine if somebody is black or not? Oh, well, there isn't. There, oh, there's not. No, there's not. No, oh, okay, because I'm I'm pretty confident that there's this. Oh, thing sorry, sorry. Maybe you would exists. say maybe you would argue for like the one drop rule or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how far you go into the fashy thing. <laughs> okay, um, so from Cal to Demon Mama, would you date a trans woman? Would I date it? Wait, would I date a trans woman? Yeah. I'm dating four trans women. Oh, wow. <laughs> Busy. Um, I am indeed, okay. but I'm yeah. very open about that. It's a, you know, I'm very open about them. So, so yeah. does, that, does that make you a lesbian? Um, Probably, yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that makes me pretty lesbian. I think most people would see me as a lesbian. Yeah, although, I mean, I don't know. 
is it fair if I sometimes find you a guy date guys cute? ever? Um, I've never dated a guy. Uh, I've just never found the right guy. Although I would, if if uh, if Elliot Page asks me out, he oh I would be DTF one hundred percent. Elliot, you you you, I'll give you my number just anytime you want. But again, most of the time I don't meet guys that I find particularly interesting, so I haven't really dated a guy. I've flirted with guys before. Um, I've had some guys treat me really really nice, but just never really worked into a relationship. How old were you when you um, knew you were trans? How old was I when I knew I was trans? Well, I didn't learn the word trans until I was 19 or 20 because I grew up. Um, I have a video on this on my channel called uh, it's called my spiritual deconstructor demon mama's spiritual deconstruction. I grew up in a cult. Um, and, uh, so I didn't know those words until I was older. However, the, um, earliest, the earliest, um, like gender complicated, uh, thoughts that I had were as young as five. Um, but the most salient ones happened around eight or nine when I was taught about, um, puberty. And when I realized like at that age, I didn't have the words for it, but I realized like I desperately, desperately did not want to have a male puberty. I desperately wanted to have a like a, a female typical puberty obviously because of my biology that wasn't in the cards uh until i turned 20 realized that trans people were a thing and was able to take uh hrt and my life has been so much better ever since then it really what does is, get what better do you, what do you mean you wanted to have a female puberty um f female usually refers to sex so i wanted to have a, a, a puberty that is typical to the female sex did you did you think that was a gotcha that's very consistent to my definition i've been using this entire time okay Okay, Thank so you, though. From, good try. Good try. From John Leox uh, for Demon Mama. Ask if she thinks Destiny is right-wing and transphobic. Oh, do I think it, that Destiny is right-wing and transphobic? Um, I don't really know, honestly. Um, like, I don't... I, I like to think he's not transphobic, that he just has some opinions. But, I don't know. He's treated me... He's treated me and many other trans people I know pretty bad. I don't know if that makes him a transphobe. I don't really think you can know those things particularly well. Um, I think that Destiny is not... I wouldn't really think it's fair to categorize Destiny as right-wing. Um, though, I will say, in some ways, he's been, uh, in his community, encouraging some right-wing positions. Um, uh, mostly, I... It's complicated as to why I think this. I'd be happy to lay this out in a different format. Um, but no, I don't really think he's right-wing or a transphobe. I do think there are some problems I have with him, but I don't really... I, I've said this a couple of times, but I don't really think that those are the... Um, I don't really think that he's like a right-winger right or a transphobe. I have some critiques of him. Okay. Oh, and I definitely think he's an asshole, for the record. <laughs> okay. So from Explosion85 to Andrew, why are you saying that gender identity is not quantifiable when Alden's numbers is clearly it's a, used it's, a, it's a troll question right they do this every fucking time enough <laughs> <laughs> every fucking time i wonder who asked um, that ugh. what a goofball <laughs> hey look see but that's a funny one that's see nothing <laughs> nobody was insulted by that nobody was called less I still than don't know what, what it means like what's the whole um thing behind that oh alden's mm -hmm. number uh, alden's number is a reference to are you familiar with the streamer vosh yeah okay so um uh vosh was once in a uh debate with somebody uh a, a a fascist dumb fuck um probably not too much unlike uh unlike papa fascist over here um and he made up a number on the spot called alden's number to make himself sound intelligent and smart and the other guy said yeah of course i know alden's number which he had just made up on the spot um and yeah. it made them look like a total fool um mm -hmm. which isn't much of a challenge for fascists but um yeah so he looked like a total fool and uh and as a result it's become a meme across many communities because there's lots of people who like vosh and who think that's funny yeah i think they asked that like four times when andrew was debating vosh i fucking yeah. fell for it every time oh they, they um. love it. it it's kind of honestly it's kind of a it's kind of a tired meme but hey if they like it at least it's a harmless meme yeah i don't know all these memes because i'm so new to this all this stuff oh, going worry. on so they Welcome. get they get me every time <laughs> hey you're a good you're a great host so thanks for oh, thanks thank for you. you know i'm glad i'm glad we got you on the scene <laughs> um so from lrn news um if homosexuality isn't same sex activity then heterosexuality isn't opposite sex activity heterosexuality is not necessarily associated with reproduction correct that is correct you are absolutely <laughs> correct about that um uh, i agree with you 100 um we recognize this all the time 
Um, there are heterosexual uh, trans relationships. There are heterosexual relationships where uh, the partners are unbeknownst to them. In fact, I uh, one of my roommates did not know that they were uh, that they were intersex for most of their life, um, only to find out later that they were um, and that they. If, if we were using a purely sex-based definition, they'd never been in a heterosexual relationship in their entire life, but that's obviously not true. Heterosexuality, just like homosexuality, is more functionally based off of, excuse me, gender. Can you give me an example of a heterosexual trans relationship? Yeah, super easy. Trans woman and a trans man. Bam. Done. That was okay. easy. Did you think that was a gotcha? <laughs> Did you think that was a gotcha too? God, you gotta well, go to clown school or something, they're, dude. Uh, they're, they're all paradoxes. Oh, totally. If you keep saying yeah, that, eventually, totally. eventually you'll believe it. Maybe you can cry. Maybe you can cry into your pillow at night. It's a paradox. It's a paradox, and, and not just you being stupid. Um. So I don't know. Did we do this one from August Morin to Big Papa Fascist? Why do you think other people should be able to determine your identity? Why do you seem yeah, to? Yeah, we already. We this already one? Know. Okay. Some days I get lost in it. Okay, let's see here. Um. All right, so from Tyler Bluntman to Big Papa Fascist, the amount of patience you have had in this debate is next level, despite the incredibly constant disrespect from Demon. Kudos. Okay. I don't think that's a question. Um, let me see here. Hey, it's all right. Listen, T Tyler, Tyler, listen. It's not okay for you to just be fucking sucking off Big Papa Fascist here in public. That's totally inappropriate. <laughs> okay, so from Intellectual but, but if he did, that wouldn't make him gay, right? I don't know. Does Tyler? Does Tyler? I don't know. Does Tyler Bluntman identify as a man? I don't know. Um, I appreciate the attempt to exhaust people with these debate tactics, but reality will still be reality, no matter the obnoxious efforts. Your delusion. Okay. Cool story, Come my on. man. Moving there we go. On. There's another one. Hey, we got another one. Uh, um. Okay. Let's see. Do you do you see do you do you find it interesting that like these things just bounce off of me? I get them so much; yeah. it's literally constant. I have the oh. I, I have like I, I have like an armored shell. Um, from Mayo uh, for Demon Mama, if your eight-year-old son told you he wanted to he wanted reassignment surgery, how long would you deny him that? Oh, uh, I would if my if my if I had a child and my eight year old son said that they wanted s sexual reassignment surgery, I would uh, I would very simply follow the procedures that we already have in place. I would have them talk to a, a gender therapist. I would have them talk to uh, their doctor. And uh, obviously, it's the part of the thing is that you, you there's I don't to my knowledge there has never once been a sexual reassignment surgery done on anyone like uh, I think the earliest that has ever been done was like 15 or 14 and that was somebody who had already passed through puberty at a at an early age and was suffering greatly so this is just a silly made up fantasy situation I would tell them I would tell them to go through the exact same process and I would I would support them the entire way. I would inform them that hey, it's like physically not safe for you to get a surgery like this at age 8. However, um but we'll work with your doctors and when the time is right, when it's safe for you and if you desire if you desire it after, you know, talking to your doctors and all of that, then you'll be fine. Of course, it's simple. I mean, you wouldn't deny how long would you deny your 8-year-old son an a, a, a an appendix removal? My god. This is so silly. So from Alan W for Demon Mama, as probably the only Scotsman in this chat, I just want to say that real men wear skirts, and when we wear them, we look amazing. True, true. <laughs> Listen, my kilt wearers, I, I have respect for you. I hope you enjoy the breeze. I'm sure it is very freeing. In fact, I know it is. So there you go. <laughs> um, okay, let me see if we had any more that we jotted down. Um, come on. Uh, do you know that policies have been passed where trans people can be denied care at a hospital or shelter because of their gender identity? How do you feel about those policies? Um, I, I'm so sorry. Can you um, can you repeat that again? Um, I, sure. I apologize. Yeah, no. Um, do you know that policies have been passed where trans people can be denied care at a hospital or shelter because of their gender identity? How do you feel about those policies? 
Oh, uh, policies that deny people from receiving needed ca uh, needed care or assistance just because of um, just because of their identity, in my opinion, are are really really um, bad. Uh, there's been a lot of those, um, and I think that they're horrible. Um, they're discriminatory, and they deny people for a ar completely arbitrary reason, um, uh, a completely arbitrary reason, care that would otherwise be given to them. Um, so I think those types of things are are um, not good. Sorry, I hope that was a good enough answer. I, I apologize. Yeah. Andrew, did you want to answer it too? What was the question? Yeah, it says, do you know that policies have been passed where trans people can be denied care at a hospital or shelter because of their gender identity? How do you feel about those policies? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at the policies. Or how do you feel about um, being able to get rejected at hospitals? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if that's true. So I would have to look at it. All right. Um, all right. So why do you think trans people have a high rate of homelessness? Um, I can answer that pretty uh, pretty consistently. Um, there's a there's a number we've we've been able to identify this a lot, and the number one reason why trans people have a lot of homelessness is because they tend to be um, abandoned by their family. Um, it is very very common. In fact, it happened to me. I was kicked out by one of my family members who, in fact, threatened to kill me um, if I con continued to pursue um, living as my genuine and authentic self. Um, that is the harsh truth that a lot of people don't like to hear, um, is that the reason why uh, the suicide rates, the homelessness rates, the uh, addiction rates uh, uh, for trans youth are so high is because it has become normalized in our society for families to discard their, their child if their child is trans. And this is also true about gay kids as well, although it is less common now because being gay has become um, normalized a little bit further in our society and will continue to become normalized. Um, uh, you know, it is, it is, the unfortunate truth is exactly that. Andrew, do you want to answer? Uh, no, I don't really care about it. Okay. No, that's interesting. Damn, I wonder why you wouldn't care about kids being suffering. Uh, damn, it's that, 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 that fucking copyright, uh, 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 TM fascist care. Okay, so from Tyler Bluntman again, your biggest fan, um, to Demon, why do you get so upset if someone using pronouns you don't like while you continue to insult, curse, and disrespect them? Oh, Tyler's very, very obsessed. It's it's, it's very big simple. Fan I of don't. Yours. Yeah, I, exactly. He's probably my mm -hmm. number one, my number one mm -hmm. anti fan. Um, <laughs> really interesting. I guess I just kind of live rent free, my friend. Um, why am I upset if someone uses pronouns you don't like? Actually, interestingly, I rarely ever am. People misgender me all the time, and I simply point out that that's kind of shitty. It doesn't really make me upset anymore. It's so common. It's so commonly done as an attack, as an attempt to make me feel bad that I don't feel bad anymore. I used to when I was um, I used to when I was younger. When I was a younger, uh, you know, baby trans, um, it used to really bother me because it felt uh, like people were going out of their way to be cruel to me which is true they usually are um but i've never really been one who's like reacted really poorly um to that sort of thing just never really have it doesn't uh there's like i don't know i think it's mean i think it's horrible i think other people are hurt more of it but i'm a t i'm a pretty tough girl so yeah okay so we're, we'll ask like two more questions then we'll do closing statements um, sure all right, so from Kevin C. to Dean and Mama, do you see it as a possible future you could transition back to male? Do I, for me or like for other people? Yeah, probably. Uh, for me, that. no, this wouldn't, I would, I would literally, like I would literally uh, stay like as my identity, as my genuine self. Uh, I would fight for that to the death. And I mean that. Um, I am that serious about, I, and I know this because I know what it felt like to live the way that I did before, to live inauthentically, to not uh, be able to express myself uh, the way that I wish to express myself, the way that feels correct and well to me. Um, and it was miserable. And so, no, I can never imagine anything like that. Do I think that such things should be possible? Oh, I think in the future it will be super easy. Someday we will probably have the technology to allow people to shift gender at will. And that will be so cool. Uh, I, I think that that sort of a future would be f really, frankly, very awesome. Um, and I'm sure there'd be a lot of people who are too afraid um, to explore gender right now because of how horrible the... In fact, I know this. I've talked to people who are too afraid to explore their gender now because they would be punished socially for it. 
So from August Morin, Big Papa Fascist, you have seemed to give up on this debate and refuse to engage with facts about the topic. Do you think there may be a flaw in the way you think about this issue? You didn't give up on the debate at all. After you after you win a debate, you don't have Kinda to keep did. engaging. Oh yeah, nice one. What what happened what happened here? <laughs> You're such a was, badass. Was oh. through just a through just a couple of questions, I was able to pull out the paradoxical nature of this thing. Sometimes in a debate, the best thing to do is what we call operation let them speak. And in, in this case, the more that the more that Demon Mama spoke, the more that Demon Mama made my points for me. I don't know how much involvement do you want me to have in that? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that this hasn't gone as well for you as you think it is. We'll see. We'll throw a few more. Um, hold on, and then we'll finish it. Okay. So, um, from intellectual moved it. Um, if I, a twenty-four-year-old male, mentally identify with being a sixteen-year-old teen girl, could could sign up um, to a their what the fuck is this wrestling team and body slam them. Who is to decide my identity other than myself? Like yeah, this is a this is a really I bad like... faith and question, and I yeah. feel like they were struggling with typing. Um, you might yeah. want to you might want to put down the bottle and take a nap, sleep off <laughs> some of that, because this this did not come out very well. But I can explain <laughs> this. Um, it's very simple. I've explained this many times. Um, being sixteen is is not an identity. Like, uh, it it just isn't. Like, that's not how it works. Sixteen is a a measurement of years that you've spent on this earth. So you don't identify by your age. Um, that's silly. Um, yeah, it just doesn't happen. So, but, but gender is an identity. So yeah, simple. All right, so last question and then we'll do closing. So from green, from green host or some progressive, how important is empathy to understanding politics and trans issues? Andrew, why don't you go first? Um, I don't know. I mean, how important is it to have empathy for people who, uh, don't want to call another person? by pronouns they know are lies. Do you think that that's important? Or do you only think that it's important for the person who's doing the identifying? Well, that was an in incoherent answer from um, Andrew. Um, yeah, uh, that's- You got mama and papa actually. So yeah, realized. yeah, uh, from, from, from papa, papa over here hasn't been, uh, hasn't been really uh, thinking too hard on this one, but um, yeah, no, it's pretty. I mean, I think empathy is always important. Um, I think empathy is an important human trait in general. Um, it is um, what makes it possible for us to like work together. And uh, I don't know about you, but if you um, if you know anything about humanity, humanity is a social uh, a social um, creature. We are all social. That is how we got to the point that we are now. Um, our we evolved our empathy. Um, in order to help us get along better. Empathy is very important, and you should try to have empathy with everyone to the best of your ability. But there are some people out there who um, really abuse the empathy of others, uh, people who say that they're really hurt by having to respect you as another person, when in reality, they just don't give a shit and they want to control who you are. Those types of people, you know, you might need to tone, you might need to just say, wow, I've given you a lot of empathy, but you're kind of abusing it here. Um, and recognize that they're not engaging in good faith. But I think that empathy in general is a good thing to have. Um, there's a quote from a really, really great uh, socialist um, uh, uh, influencer online by the name of Michael Brooks that goes, um, be ruthless with systems and be kind to people. And that is generally the way that I try to go. Um, but there are limits, of course, to this. I don't think that I need to be particularly kind to people who... Um, are totally disrespectful and think that you're just a insane liar or something like that. I don't really think that, I think they've used up their, their kindness. Okay, hey, thank you. All right, so now we can do um, final thoughts and closing statements. Hell yeah. Um, all right, so uh, Dean and Mama, why don't you go first? Um, yeah, um, uh, I think that uh, I've done a pretty good job here laying out um, my, my logic. I think that it makes sense. I've made the case here for why um, recognizing the profound difference between sex and gender is valuable and produces a better world, a more clear, uh, um, a, a much clearer way of communicating with each other, and also makes you not sound as stupid as fascists um, because uh, you're actually able to engage with these topics on a level that is uh, intellectually mature and can um, recognize that things change over time and that this is actually can be a very good thing for us, can make us stronger. Um, so yeah, uh, respect trans people. Um, um, uh, recognize that what what is uh, good for trans people is is actually um, often 
what's good for everybody um and that uh, we are only as free as the least of us so we should remember that and um yeah the uh i don't think there was a really particularly convincing argument laid out against this besides i don't like it um i when i pointed out that there are different types of social constructs and that a quantification um is a matter of what you are trying to quantify not just a word that you throw out to sound smart um, or to think that you sound smart, um, that was not really engaged with. So, um, yeah, uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to uh, argue with me or whatever, um, I am always open for questions, answers, and debates after every panel. You can find me at demonmama.com forward slash live if you want to join the chat right away. Come on, I'd be more than happy to sort out any uh, disagreements you have with me. Um, but I think I did for the purpose of this, this panel um, and Answer all of the the questions and lay that out in a very logical fashion. Thank you, Andrew. The best thing that you can do, oftentimes with lunatics, who nice. run contrary, who run contrary to their own narratives, is just watch them do it in real time. And you'll find that none of the paradoxes that I brought up were actually addressed in any type of coherent way. It's just a bunch of rambling babble that made absolutely no sense. We're no closer to understanding this phenomenon than we were before. And we never will get close to understanding this phenomenon because all, all demon mama can say is, I'm a woman because I say so. That's it. It's as incoherent as you can possibly get. And when I pointed these paradoxes out, I mean, demon mama can't even tell you what a homosexual is. I mean, this is the type of insanity that we're dealing with. And uh, yeah, I think I think sometimes Sometimes it's okay. Just let them talk. Okay. Well, thank you both. Um, we do, after every debate, have a poll in the community section on our page. So if you guys want to give your opinion on who you think won the debate, you can go um, vote now. Leave your commenting on your reasoning why. Make sure they're constructive criticism, go not asshole there. comments. Um, but, go vote, everybody. Yeah, no, thank go you vote. so go much vote. for coming on. Uh, David Mama, it was nice having you on for the first time. Hope to see you back here on politically provoked yeah, um, yeah absolutely other than that we are going to be debating infrared next he it's uh the debate's running a little bit behind so it should start in about 20 minutes on tanky communism so for everybody in the chat we're just going to keep on going um so you guys can stick around and we will be getting that going soon um yeah so other than that that's all folks um fantastic I don't know. <laughs> thank you yeah All absolutely right. uh thank you so much for having me on it was a, a very interesting um experience <laughs> and, and uh, i have to say I'm, I'm a fan of your of, of your uh your layout and your your mm. modding uh modding style um yeah uh doris it was fantastic uh talking with you <laughs> i i recognize that you basically crossed your arms and didn't really listen to anything that i was saying but i did my best to engage with you in good faith um and i'm sorry if you feel a little sulky after this uh it's, it wasn't my intention to hurt your feelings <laughs> anything else no okay all right all right bye everyone thanks for coming bye. on absolutely bye for now <laughs>